The following is a special Wayne Hills Television sports presentation. Last year, the Patriots completed the drive for five. This year, they plan to continue the pursuit for perfection as the quest for 52 begins on new turf. The journey starts here as Wayne Hills faces off against the Highlanders of Northern Highlands. Will the Patriots be able to keep the fire burning? Find out next as the 2008-2009 Wayne Hills Patriots season kicks off. It's Hills vs. Highlands, game on. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Patriot Stadium, where tonight the Northern Highland Highlanders come in to play your Wayne Hills Patriots as the Patriots open up the 2008-2009 football season. I'm Dan Cohen, alongside Sean Yu and Brian DeBow. Well, guys, it's been a while since we've had football. How are you feeling right now? Personally, I'm really pumped for this season. I can't wait what, ha what happens. I'm a junior now, so I can appreciate Wayne Hills football a little bit more. And they graduated a lot of seniors last year. They have a lot of spectators that think that they won't be able to do it. They're doubting that they'll get to the state championship, especially undefeated. I think they'll be able to do it, although they're a young team right now. I think they have a lot of key players. You know what? I'm excited too, Dan, but this weather is just uh, you know, making me sad that we can't have a full production going on, but let's hope, the, let's hope it runs good. Well, guys, it's a new look for the Wayne Hills Patriots, and in more ways than one. The most obvious reason is the new field. We have turf for the first time instead of the natural grass that we've had for a while. Additionally, we have a new-look team. It's a young team returning very few starters, and with a very few unproven stars, there's a lot to be seen this season. And, of course, up in the booth, a big change, change as we graduated two announcing legends in David Suntup and Andrew Guile. Well, first, let's go right into the keys for tonight's game. My keys are this. Protect Quinn. He's a young quarterback with very little varsity experience against first-team defenses. It's going to be important to give him time to throw the ball so he can become comfortable in the pocket. My second key is to protect the ball. And by this I mean the Wayne Hills Patriots are going to be playing a lot of teams that are in reality below the quality of them. And in order to keep the ball away from the other team, they're going to have to play smart with the ball. The other team can't score when the Patriots have the ball. And my final key, work the ball around on offense. In the past few years, the Patriots have always had one or two guys last year, Dan DeSico and uh, Carlton Morrison, who really were able to carry the load on offense. Brian Ogden is really the only true returning offensive starter, so they're going to really have to work the ball around on offense. And Ronnie Drees and Justin Horahan, they're going to have to prove themselves. And my keys for 2008 are play smart. By play smart, I mean I mean no stupid turnovers or no or no stupid penalties. You should keep the turnovers down, which means less offensive possessions for the other team, and keep the penalties down. My next key is pressure the def pressure the offense. The defense has to come off come with a blitz consistently, both with the line and even secondary blitzes. By th with the pressure coming, it gives the quarterback mistakes and fumbles. My next my final key is special teams. The past years, you had Carlton Morrison, Dan DeSico getting a lot of returns during the season, and even Ray Van Pena. This year, the special teams have to step up and get a, enough touchdowns to support the offense for this year. My keys are change up the playbook. I mean, in the past, we all know that Wayne Hills is a legendary running team. They like to go with the Seiko Morrison last year. But this year, they have Ronnie. He's a new player. And they also have Mike Quinn, who he has a strong arm. And a lot of teams like to these days like to bring in three tackles or bring in the blitz. I mean, you're going to have to eventually throw it. I know in this weather tonight, it's rainy. But you're going to have to throw it up there. You could easily fumble just as he could throw up an interception. He's got a strong arm, and he's got to step up. My second key is senior step up. 
a lot of players on this team are seniors starting in new positions they weren't in last year, but they were juniors playing last year, such as Brian Ogden. I think they're really going to have to step up and show their leadership skills to the juniors and sophomores that are getting some game time. Show them that this is, where, this is Wayne Hills, and we're a legend. We're a dynasty. You have to win the state championship. It's expected. My final key is dominate the line. Obviously, you're want to, going to want to get as much pressure as you can on the opposing offense, considering you have so many good D-backs that can make plays and interceptions off faulty throws. And then also on offense side, you want to give Quinn enough room, enough time to throw the ball, as Dan said. So, I mean, as long as they go through all that, they shouldn't have any problems. Right, Brian. Speaking of Mike Quinn, our very own Brian DeBow had a moment to speak with the quarterback in Outside the Pocket. Hello and welcome to the premiere Outside the Pocket. I'm joined by the quarterback of your Wayne Hills Patriots, Mike Quinn. We're going to do a game preview right now. Now, Mike, defeating last year Valley brought the streak up to 40. What's the team have to do this year to keep the streak alive? Well, you know, this year all we have to do is take, you know, take it one game at a time, one week at a time. And um, we've been training and we've been working out since the beginning of the year, January. We've been weight training, we've been doing everything. So what, uh, we just need to keep practicing 110% like we've been doing. Yeah, you guys should be fine as long as you keep focused and everything. Last year, you basically apprenticed Mike Giapapa, the previous quarterback, who led the Patriots to two state championships. What did you really learn from him and take from him? Well, he was a great quarterback, like you said, but um, I really learned his leadership. His leadership was uh, uncanny on the field. He was um, one of uh, the greatest leaders in Wayne Hills. He, I... Now, there's been a lot of speculation about the team concerning whether you guys will be able to keep up with how you've been, considering you lost a lot of offensive starters. You lost DeSico, Mars, and Giapapa. The list just goes on and on. Since graduating most of your star starters, what are your thoughts on that to keep the drive alive? Well, you know, every team, no matter how good you are, always loses their star starters. That's why we expect um, sophomores and juniors to step it up. So juniors become seniors, sophomores become juniors, and they just have to play at 110%, you know, and they just have to be stars on the field. They become, they become the new stars. Now we're going to get a little more personal with the game. You guys are playing Northern Highlands tonight. They're not the best team by any means, considering last year we beat them 63-0. Last year they went 0-10, which means they didn't win one game whatsoever. They're not a big, huge threat, but what they are a team. So what has to be done to consider that an upset doesn't occur? Well, upsets can happen anytime, anywhere. But um, what we need to do is just keep focus. Don't goof around. Don't goof around in the practice. Go 100% and just keep doing what we're doing. I mean, I feel like as long as you guys don't let it be bygones and just keep up with your focus and stay focused and you don't really put in like the third string or anything, you guys should be fine. I think you'll be fine in your season debut and you guys should be fine. Wish you best of luck this season. And now we're going to throw it to the kickoff, so stay tuned. High School's Patriot Stadium, a home of champions. Tonight's NBIL football game has the home team Patriots hosting the visiting Highlanders of Northern Highlands High School. This game is being played under the National Federation of State High School Football Associations and the rules as adopted by the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association. These rules are different from those used to administer collegiate and professional football. The officials assigned to this game tonight, the referee Jay Baumgartner, the umpire Bucky Rittenauer, the head linesman, Bob Hopkin, the line judge, John Witch, the back judge, Steve Genzale, and the clock operator, Carl Thurkildsen. And the chain crew consists of Rich Basilicato, Lenny Diderno, Jr., 
and Lenny Daderno Sr. And now to introduce the starting lineup for the Wayne Hills Patriots. This is their starting defensive team. At defensive end, number 59, Paul Drake, number 59. At defensive tackle, number 64, Nick Tuminello, number 64. At defensive tackle, number 55, Ryan Salerno, number 55. At defensive end, number 84, Joe Russo, number 84. At linebacker, number eight, Mike Waller, number eight. At linebacker, number 45, Ryan Daderno, number 45. At linebacker, number 44, James Delectus, number 44. At linebacker, number five, Brian Ogden, number five. At cornerback, number 23, Ronnie Drees, number 23. At safety, number 80, Matt DeBlock, number 80. And at cornerback, number 14, Justin Hurahan, number 14. Now, it doesn't, there's nobody to play the national anthem, right? Let's welcome the rest of the Wayne Hills Patriot Squad. There is no national anthem. There's no band. No band. There's no band. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you now please rise as we take a few moments prior to the Pledge of Allegiance to remember those who lost their lives on that tragic day of September the 11th, 2001, already seven years ago. We remember the thousands who lost their lives, and in particular, our own Wayne Hills alumni, Danny Aflito and Robert DeRaney. Ladies and gentlemen, 11 seconds of silence, please. Thank you. And now the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome back, everybody, to Patriot Stadium. I'm Dan Cohen, alongside Sean Yu and Brian DeBow. Well, we're almost ready to get underway in the 2008-2009 Wayne Hills Patriots football season as the Wayne Hills captains walk out to center field for the first tip, uh, first coin course of the year. The captains for the Wayne Hills Patriots are number 23, Ronnie Drees, number 14, Justin Horahan, number 45, Ryan DiDerno, number five, Brian Ogden, and number eight, Mike Waller. Now guys, I have to say, you know, 
the field is looking great, but um, the rain, the rain is going to affect the game somehow. How do you guys think the rain is going to affect this game? You know, the rain is a big problem. I, I would think, I thought the whole day it wasn't going to rain. I was hoping for no rain, but it is raining. And the one problem I think that's going to happen is drop passes and maybe a couple fumbles. But other than that, since the tur since the new turf, I, I th other than that, I think they're fine. I mean, obviously it's a disadvantage that it's raining, but I mean, this is what they train for. It's just another thing to take into effect. They know that it's always possible it could be raining. They have to hold on to the ball when they run. They have to hold on to the ball when they catch. They can't tip it. Mike's got to be careful on those snaps not to let any of them fall loose. Overall, I don't think it'll be a huge factor, especially with the turf and everything. They're used to this field. They know every nook and cranny about it. So I don't think it'll be a huge factor, but I think a few passes will be dropped. Now, what are the keys in tonight's game are going to be, is going to be the running game. Last year and the year before, the, Ra the Patriots have always had a great pedigree of running backs. Ray Van Peenen, Dan DeSico, Carlton Marson. Carlton Marson and Dan DeSico really did a great job of running the ball last year, but they graduated, and now it's time for a new group of running backs to take over for the Patriots, Ronnie Dries, Tom DiBianca. What do you guys think about the running backs, and what do they have to do to be successful this season? I mean, as you said, those are huge shoes to fill with Ray Van Peenen, Carlton Marson, and Dan DeSico, but I honestly think that Ronnie Dries is up to the challenge. He's not the tallest guy in the world, but he, I've heard he's very fast. I, he can make great cuts, jukes, and I think overall he's going to have a successful year and it'll be fine. Okay, well, we're ready for football. The Patriots are going to kick off to start this 08-09 season. Tim Divers, the kicker for the William Pilts Patriots, he's a, ju he, he's a junior. Tim Divers, he's a junior. He had a great season last year as a sophomore kicker. Um, really good on extra points, long field goals, and he's really good. This, this is the year that he's going to have to prove himself on the kickoffs, as Jeremiah Kale took the majority of the kickoffs last year. So this is something new for Tim Devers, but he's been working hard in the offseason for this. What do you guys think about Tim Devers kicking the ball this year? I mean, Tim Devers is a great field goal kicker, but kickoffs is a different thing, but let's just hope he can run down the field and maybe get a tackle in case someone breaks loose. I think that he'll be fine. He had a lot of success with the field goals, but I think overall he's up for the challenge as the 2008 season goes underway. Well, we're ready for football. 2008-2009 season is now officially underway. As the kickoff is received at the six-yard line by the Northern Hounds kickoff return man. And he's taken down at around the 21-yard line by a host of Wayne Hills Patriots. And now to see the defense starting lines for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Paul Drake, number 59. Ryan Solero, number 55. Nick Tuminello, number 64. Joey Russo, number 84. Mike Waller, number 8. Ryan Dederno, number 45. James Dialectus, number 44. Ryan Ogden, number 5. Ronnie Grease, number 23. Justin Arhan, number 14. Matt DeBlock, number 80. James Dialectus and Albert Falzerano had the tackle on that kickoff. Hand off, and the running back is tripped up at the 22-yard line. That was a great play, great stop by the defense for the Wayne Hills. I mean, especially on the kickoff, especially anything, any run that's stopped before the 25-yard line is considered a success, especially they just limited that run to about two yards, not much success. Yeah, and in an article by uh, North Jersey Sports, Olsen says this is one of the most complete defensive and offensive lines he's ever had. And as you can see, they're just pounds of running back. Second and 10 for the Hollanders on their own 21-yard line. Kevin Kenny, the quarterback, in the shotgun. Back to pass. Throws to his left, and it's caught at the 31-yard line. And we're going to have a touchdown on the second play of the game as Northern Highlands takes an early 6-0 lead. That is A no huge turn of events. That is not the start the Patriots wanted. I mean, he just did a quick cut on the field, caught the ball, and he was gone. Patriots have to do a better job of dropping back and not biting on that pass. Yeah, right there, he just pressed up too much and just basically broke his ankles. Well, with the score six to zero now, and in all likelihood soon to be seven zero, the Patriots are going to have uh, a tough job on the opening possession. Um, hopefully, the defensive jitters are out of the way, and we'll see what the offense can do on their first drive. And My this is shocking for Wade knows because this is the first time I believe in my years of watching, that they've been down 7 nothing in the first quarter, so. Especially within three plays. Yeah, let's hope, let's hope, let's hope they could come back and uh, play offense like they usually do. 
Number 34, Jeff Sauer, will attempt the PAT for the Highlanders. High snap, kick is up and is blocked by the Patriots. So That's the score will remain at 6-0. I talked too soon. I said in all likelihood it'll be 7-0. It's 6-0 as the PAT is missed. That's the momentum the Patriots want. I mean, after giving up a touchdown like that, you don't want them to think that they have the upper hand on you, especially a team that went 0-10 last year and hasn't had a winning season in God knows how long. So, I mean, the Patriots, that's a good job blocking the field goal overall. Yeah, great job by the line pressing up. Uh, that was just great play. Nothing else to say about it. Good job for the line. I believe number 14, Justin Horahan, got his hands on that kick. I think he's the one that blocked it. His jumping ability just enables him so much to jump over the line and get those blocks, as you saw. Yeah, and you know, in some of the basketball games, it looks like he could dunk sometimes when he goes up for a layup. So he's, he's a great athlete. Brian Ogden and Ronnie Drees are back to receive this kick. <coughs> Highlands to kick from their own 40. It's a relatively short kick, which is fielded at the 24 yard line. And the tackle is made at the 41 yard line. Offensive lineups. Paul Drake, number 59. Matt Rubin, number 72. Ryan Solano, number 55. Chris Fonte, number 54. Brian Dickman, number 86. Mike Quinn, number 12. Ronnie G, number 23. Ryan Diderno, number 45. Brian Ogden, number 5. Justin Harhan, number 14. Quinn under center, eye formation, handoff to Dries as there's a collision in the backfield. Quinn throws deep down the left side, intended for Ogden, and it's caught! The th oh, incomplete. I thought they caught it, and it appears that Brian Ogden may have, maybe the ball is bad out of his hands. That would have been a huge completion on the first play of the game. And probably a shocker, as I thought the play action worked well. I thought the, they would run on the first play of the game. At first, when uh, Quinn threw the ball, I thought it was very underthrown. I thought it was going to get picked off, but I guess the, the defensive back didn't see and didn't turn, turn around in time. But a uh, great play by Ogden. Just missed the catch. Toss to Dries at the left. Dries with a cutback. Turns out to the left side and turns the corner at the 43 yard line. He's tackled at the sideline at the 44 43 yard line. Since Quinn is a rookie quarterback, this is his junior year, first year starting on varsity, there might have to rely on the run game a little bit as you saw he collided on the first play, but I think you just gotta put that out of his mind. It wasn't that bad of a throw considering how wet it is outside. Yeah, I heard the main thing is just splitting splitting time be between uh, Ronnie Dries and Tom DiBianca and look for them to break out for some huge gains. It'll be third and three for the Patriots. Quinn the center. Hand off to Dries, Dries up to the left side, and he's broken free, 40, 30. Cuts it back to the right side, switches the field. He might go all the way. Touchdown, Ronnie Dries. The first score of the year for the Wayne Hills Patriots, and they regain the, they tie the game quickly. Great play there by Dries. I mean, he broke the tackles, and as you see, it was gonna be him one-on-one -on -one with a defender, but he cuts back in the middle of the field and is able to have the vision that a running back needs to score a touchdown, and it paid off there. Now, yeah, great play by Ronnie, but what people don't realize is how much of a hold the offensive line gave him. Like Olsen said in the article, this is one of the most complete offensive lineups. I mean, also offensive lines. And they just had a com huge hole for Ronnie to move and juke his way through. Tim Divers on his first PAT attempt of the season. Justin Horahan will hold. The kick is up, and it is good as the Patriots take a 7-6 to six lead. And you know what, guys? Football's a game of momentum. Highland started off great, got the momentum. I think it's pretty safe to say that the momentum, for now at least, probably switched over to the Wayne Hill side. Yeah, Brian, you mentioned it before, that blocked field goal, that blocked extra point is a big momentum change. I mean, stopped all the momentum for Northern Highlands, and Wayne Hills is back on track. There's 10.06 off in the first quarter, and we're already seeing our third kickoff. I mean, I expect a high-scoring game tonight. The Patriots averaged 32.8 game, 38.2 points per game last season. Excuse me. And I mean, a high, high point game is expected. Rising star sophomore Ross Nash is back to receive this kick. Divers for the kickoff. 
And it's a long kick. And it'll be caught inside the five yard line from the Northern Highlands. And the Northern Highlands kick, kick return man is tackled at the 16 yard line. Good kickoff coverage by the Patriots. Beautiful kick by Tim Divers. That was almost a professional kick as it was in the end zone. I mean, the Patriots get down there enough in time to stuff them before, I believe, on the 15 yard line, 420 yard line. Great play. They don't have any field position to work with right now, Highlands. Yeah, that kick definitely surprised Northern Highlands as they were playing up close near the 15 yard line around, and uh, re the return man had to run back to get the ball. Nick Tuminello and Matt Rubin were on that tackle. Kenny under center for Highlands. And we have this play whistled down. Penalty. I believe it's false start. It is indeed false start. Our first penalty of the game, and it goes against Northern Highlands. That'll set them back five yards, first and 15. That's going to bring you back to the 10-yard line, and I mean, that's not where you want to be, especially against this defensive line. They'll push you back and push you back. Until you're, before you know it, you're in the safety. And that's some points unanswered that you don't need right now. First and 15 from their own 13. Kenny sends a man in motion. And it's handed off. And not much running room as the Northern Highlands runner is stuffed for a minimal game, maybe one or two. Yeah, great job by the line uh, with Paul Drake in the line. I mean, it's just a wall, basically. And great play by the Doderno with the tackle. Doderno, great linebacker. The offensive line for Northern Highlands is noticeably small, going up against Ryan Salerno, Nick Tuminello. Those guys are pretty tall kids and pretty wide, and they're able to push right through this defensive, this offensive line to plug those holes and not allow the run through. Brendan Santry, number five, had that run. He's a senior. Kenny the shotgun, second and 18, and it's a high snap. This one goes into the end zone, and it's kicked back to safety for the, the Highlands, Northern Highlands. There's a flag down on the play. I think it was false start. I saw one of the linemen or uh, tight ends jump a little early. I mean, the quarterback knew what to do in that situation, which is unfortunate for Hills, but he knew to kick it out of bounds. Otherwise, that could have resulted in a safety. The call is a false start on Northern Highlands, so we'll see how this affects the play. The whistle was blown before the play. So the outcome of the play is actually nullified and it will remain 2nd and 18 from the 10 yard line. Yeah, unfortunate for Northern Highlands, but uh, again, great play by uh, Wayne Hills. That no, it's, it's, I'm sorry, Brian. That high snap combined with two penalties is not what Northern Highlands was hoping for on this drive, especially as Hills just answered those six points they scored. Kenny in the gun again. Hands it off, and again, not much running room for Brandon Santry as he's taken down for another minimal gain of either one or two. This is what Wayne Hills Patriots wants. This is the start that we all thought they were going to have. Maybe that, t that touchdown was just a fluke, and I think that now they're ready to play. They know what to do, and they're ready. Yeah, one of my keys for 2008 was pressure, and right now they, it's, not, it's not like they're blitzing, but just a line creates so much pressure for the offensive linemen and QB that they're just they're just in a state of confusion. Well, it seems like the Wayne Hills off, uh, defense got the jitters out of the way on that second play of the game. They're playing much better on this drive. Kenny again in the shotgun, sends a man in motion. Draws back to pass, rolls to his left, and he's going to take this for the run, and he's sacked in the, in the end zone for safety by number 59, Paul Drake. Great job there by Paul Drake to penetrate the line and run after that quarterback. He was scrambling to the right, but he was ever to catch him down and bring him down for the safety. You know what? Paul Drake is an excellent player, big guy. You know, when I see him in the hallways, he's just towers over people. And uh, great play by Paul Drake. Great play by Paul Drake, and he starts off the season. He starts off the season. Oh, and we actually get to see a replay here of Drake's. As you see, Drake comes around the end and comes from behind, and Kenny had no idea what was going on. And he just blew by the offensive uh, lineman, and that's Paul Drake's speed coming in also. That safety combined with the block extra point puts the Patriots up by a field goal, which is big considering they scored a touchdown early on in the game. And, and that's a good point, Brian, because now with a field goal, the Highlanders can only tie the game. They can't take the lead. So, you know, that may be significant in, in, the, end. in the future of the game. That may be the difference between overtime or a Northern Highlands win or a Northern Highlands loss. And now, the, now Hose gets a ba ball back, so let's look for some offensive firepower. 
So now Wayne Hills will in all likelihood have better field position than they would on a normal kickoff because of the safety. The kickoff is actually on the 20-yard line instead of the 40-yard line. So Ogden and Dries are at their own 30 to receive the kick. And, a, and Ogden receives it at about the 36-yard line. And he's taken at the down at the Highlanders 46-yard line. A good run. I mean, that's what the Patriots want. They push him back into the safety. The defense scores points. You got the offense scoring points. Everything's clicking for them right now. They have great field position on the 45 for Mike Quinn to come and lead his troops into battle. Yeah, this definitely gives Quinn and the the rookie offense some uh, some initiative to go and score some points, so the lead doesn't get too uh, too close for Northern Highlands to catch up. Quinn under center, Jarese the single back. Quinn drops back, and he evades a sack, no. He's taken down at his own 46, 47 yard line. He went in untouched. I don't know what happened to the offensive line on that play, but he was wide open for the sack. The offensive line definitely needs to do a better job of holding their blocks like that. Mike needs some time to drop back and analyze his options, where he's gonna throw to. That He almost broke the tackle, but he grabbed his jersey and brought him down. Mike right now I think is just feeling out how far he's got to throw it, feeling out the defense and just seeing what he has to do to win. That was a loss of seven yards and it'll be second 17 from the Patriots' own 48 yard line. Drees the lone man back, two receivers left, one right. The handoff is a Drees who goes down to the left, turns at the 42 yard line and fumble! And he's still squirting and Northern Highlands recovers the ball. I believe Northern Highlands has it. Ronnie Drees is limping off the field. This could be astronomical for the Patriots. And we hopefully Ronnie Drees is okay. Just shaking up a little, a little of the play. It looks like he's going to head right out onto defense. So that's a good sign. And that was a clear fumble. No questioning for the refs. As you see, the ball just popped out as he was running. But other than that, it was a great run until the fumble. Big hole by the offensive line. As we as we all know, once it's called a fumble, there's no change, there's no challenge in high school football, there's no replay for the ref. So once it's called, it's a call. You know, maybe the you know the rain could have had an effect on that fumble. The ball may have been a little slick in Ryan Drees' hand. Either way, Northern Hounds takes over at their own 28. Hand off number five, Brandon Santry, and again, no running room as he's eaten up at his own 26-yard line. And that'll actually be a loss of two yards. Now I couldn't tell if you guys if you guys saw or not, but did the ball get smacked out, or did it did it pop out just naturally from Ronnie Drees? I believe, I, say. I believe it got popped out as he got hit from behind. He did a great job of breaking through the hole, and he almost had a first down, but he got popped from behind. I think it was unexpected, and the ball just thrusted forward. Number 13, Albert fouls around, just checks into the game. As number 23, Ronnie Drees comes out limping. That could be a bad sign for the Patriots. Hopefully he'll be okay. Kenny hands it off, and the runner's taken down for another loss or no gain. The defense is doing an excellent job right now, but right now that's what they need. After a turnover, a fumble on offense, you need the defense to step up, get you the ball back so you can just march down the field and show Northern Highlands that you're a force to be reckoned with. And if I were Northern Highlands, I mean, I would go for a pass after the first touchdown was through the air. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. They're doing these halfback draws that aren't working consistently. And I'm looking for a pass right now, because so they have to get the first down. They haven't thrown a pass once yet. Oh no, they had the pass in the in the first uh, first drive. Oh, did they? Well, it'll be third and long, third and 14 for the Highlanders. Kenny in the shotgun, four receivers set, drops back to pass, throws to his left, and it's incomplete. As number 14, Justin Hornahan, the cornerback, blocks it out of the hands of the wide receiver number three, Dave Lohman. And there you see the athleticism of Justin Horhan. Great agility to get there and swat the ball down. That was a fantastic defensive play from Horhan, as it actually it appeared that Lohman got the inside track on him, but Horhan caught up. And we're going to see the replay actually on this. And you can see Justin Horhan caught, caught back up into that play and blocked the ball out of Lohman's hands. Great defensive play by Horan to keep with his man. Running in front of the receiver like that is risky, but if he throws it to him, it's a perfect swat. But if he cuts up and goes downfield, you need to have a safety back there to get him. High snap. The punt does get off, and it is a good punt. Lots of air time, and it's caught at the 27-yard line by Justin Horahan, who's tackled down at the 37-yard line. 
Yeah, I don't think the Patriots are expecting a punt that great. I mean, I don't know. That was about a 50, 40-yard punt or something like that. I didn't see exactly. But you're right, that was a good punt. And actually, that was something a part of the game that we didn't see last year against Northern Highlands because the punter was injured. He got injured in the beginning of the season, and he's back this year. He's one of their best players, one of the best punters in North Jersey, in fact. So the Wayne Hills Patriots offense will get another try from their own 38-yard line. Eye formation behind Quinn. And it's a quick pass out to the side to Brian Ogden as he shakes a tackle and goes down to the sideline. He's tackled at about the 42-yard line. That'll be a gain of about four or five. That's the Wayne Hills special, the bubble screen. They run that, uh, I mean, numerous times during a game. And it works, it works. It gives you at least a couple yards. Sometimes if blocking is great, scores a touchdown. Great job by Brian Ogden to spin off the initial tackle, which would have resulted in a loss of yards. Instead, he gained about five yards on the play. And we can see Ronnie Drees is actually on the bench with the athletic trainer, and uh, he's lacing up his cleat. Hopefully, he's coming back in. The handoff, it's ro Quinn rolling to his left. Throws, and it's complete to Brian Ogden. He's taken down the 49-yard line. Great job there by Mike Quinn, rolling outside of the pocket, evading the defender, and then he connected with Brian Ogden. Good job by him. Yeah, I, I I believe Brian's first first play was just a post, but he came back for the pass knowing that there was pressure right behind Quinn. Strong play by the Patriots. We really got to see uh, Quinn's ability to throw on the run. Not only throwing on the run, but throwing from his weak side as he threw across his body there pretty accurately to Brian Ogden. I mean, that's hard, especially for a high school quarterback to throw off a foot like that, especially on the run in his varsity debut game. That's asking a lot of a high school quarterback, but Mike, Mike met the challenge. Yeah, most NFL QBs can't even do that. It's tough for them because it's cross body and they're evading pressure. Ogden and Horahan up top. And the ball is handed off to number 22, Tom DiBianca, for a short gain of one or two. Yeah, uh, Tom is splitting carries with Ronnie. And let's see, since Ronnie is getting his uh, cleats laced up, we'll see a lot of more carries from Ron I mean, Tom. Ronnie's injury status is definitely a crucial part to the Wayne Hills. If he is, in fact, injured, that's going to play a huge role in the Patriots' season. Second and eight from the 50-yard line for the Patriots. With just under four minutes to go in the first quarter, the score is 9-6, to six, Wayne Hills. Toss to Tom. I'm sorry, toss to number nine. Brian Dowling. Yeah, Brian Dowling. And it's a good run for a first Flag down. Flag Flag down on the play, so we'll see if this one comes back. Northern Highlands bench is pointing as it's against the Wayne Hills Patriots. Brian Dowling did a great job there. He's a sophomore, and Mike was talking to me about him in school. He's a great athlete, and they're going to alternate him between running back, wide receiver, and things like that. Such. And we're going to see a replay here. As you can see, the toss is to Brian Dowling for his first varsity run. And a strong run. Broke about three tackles. And a good run by Dowling, but it's going to come back as holding against the Patriots was called. The offensive line really needs to step up and give Mike the time he needs to make a pass complete to get the first down after that penalty. Dowling still the halfback. Toss is to Dowling as he cuts up field and is tackled down at the 52-yard line. He'll get back some of the yards that the Patriots were set back to on that play. A gain of two or three. Now this is a big play for uh, Wayne Hills as it's, I believe, third down for Wayne Hills. They, if they get this first down, great momentum. If they don't, they gotta get back on defense, get the ball, and it's gonna be tougher for them to increase their lead. We'll see what Mike Quinn's able to do on this third down conversion. Mark Romeo checks into the game. James D. Lectis comes out. Three wide receivers for the Patriots, Justin Horahan, Mark Romeo, and Brian Ogden. And we're going to have a flag thrown before the play. I think too many men on the field. Let's see what the call is. And the call is a delay of game as the Patriots took too long. I actually wasn't aware that there was a play clock in uh, high school football. It's just miscommunication for Wayne Hill's offense. Well, there did appear to be a little bit of confusion as there were players checking in and out at the last minute, and a last-minute motion also happened before the play. 
And Wayne Hills is going to take a timeout at this time with two minutes and 51 seconds to go in the first quarter. They lead nine to six. It's going to be third and long, third and 12 from their own 46 yard line. And this, this next play is going to really, uh, we're really going to see how strong Quinn's, Quinn's uh, arm is. And now, All right, now at this time, we're going to take a look at our trivia question. The Patriots have the longest current winning streak at 40 in a row. Who holds the longest winning streak in the state? We'll get the answer in the second half. Now back to us uh, saying, uh, Quinn, let's, we'll, we really have to see how, how far he can actually throw and how accurate it's going to be with the long distance. So let's see if they get this first down completion or even go for it on fourth down if they get close to it. I think that Quinn's success really relies on the offensive line and how long they can hold their blocks for and allow Quinn to wait for Ogden or Horahan to get open so he can make that completion. Now it's kind of weird that how how great the offensive line is for the running backs, how they get such huge holes. But when Quinn, they leave wide open uh, defensive linemen to come in and get him for a sack. Three wide receivers in for the Patriots. Justin Horahan in motion. Play action, Quinn drops back, throws deep over the center of the field, intent for Brian Ogden, and it's caught at the 20, at the 16 yard line. Brian Ogden in for the score. Touchdown, Brian Ogden. Oh. There's a flag on the play, and it's against the Patriots. This one will come back. But even if even if the call is on the Patriots, that was an excellent pass by uh, a Quinn for wide open Brian Ogden. Let's see what the penalty is. And how anticlimactic is this one is going to come all the way back because of an offensive holding called the second the second offensive holding on the drive. Let's look at the replay. Maybe we can see the hold. As we look at the offensive line, it's really tough to tell from there. A 10 yard penalty is assessed from the point of the infraction. I mean, the play was there. Justin Horhan came in motion for the fake end around, and Mike had Ogden wide open. He threw a great ball to him, but it's unfortunate that the play has to come back. And it wasn't even a blown coverage. Brian Ogden, he just beat his man. He ran up the gut of the field, and he beat his men, and he got open. And that's just a great effort by Brian Ogden. James Delectus to the field at the last second to go into fullback. Quinn drops back to pass. Throws deep again down the left side of the field. Again intended for Brian Ogden. And it's caught at the 26-yard line. What a catch by Brian Ogden as he sticks his hands above the Northern Highlands cornerback. A huge game for the Patriots on a long third and 30. And right there you saw how the connection between Quinn and Ogden as Quinn went back to Ogden. And great catch by Ogden as he leaped, basically just put his hands over the other defender. I think the difference in that play was that James Delectus, you saw him check in at fullback. That allowed Mike to get a little more time with blocking. James Delectus is a big guy for blocker, as we'll see on the replay. And we're going to take a look at the replay here. As you see, Quinn throws deep down the field, and Brian Ogden hops over Matt Portanova, the cornerback, to make that catch. Quinn threw the ball where it had to be. Ogden did a great job of getting away from the defender and coming down with it. So it'll be first and 10 for the Patriots from the Highlanders 24. A huge turn of events. As the Wayne Hills, and, as Wayne Hills, one play goes from their own half of the field from third and thirty, which is almost insurmountable in football. That's the equivalent of three first downs. A huge gain, and now they're only four yards away from the red zone. As they walk back up to the line, and they're going to come back into the huddle now. Confusion again. I think you'll see a timeout just to avoid that delay game. More ball. confusion as we've seen so far in the beginning of this game. The cohesion will probably improve over the course of the season. This isn't surprising. It's a young team. There's not many returning stars, especially on offense. I can only think of one Brian Ogden right now. And um, this is something you, you would expect. Um, a young quarterback in his first true varsity start. I mean, after Ronnie Dries limps off the field, you obviously know that they're going to go to the passing game just because he's not at his full capability right now. Maybe he will be later on in the game, but as of right now, he's not. So it all falls into Quinn and Ogden's hands as it is so far. Two wide receivers for the Patriots. I formation behind Quinn. And the handoff is to Dowling, who turns it to the left and bowls over a man at the 19-yard line. I'm sorry, 14-yard line. Heavy hit by Brian Dowling as he lowers his shoulders. 
and drives into the defensive back. Yeah, no chance for that defender. I mean, he had a, he was running with a f head full of steam, running downhill. That was Jerome Bettis like. Brian Dowling, again, he's a sophomore. I mean, he's playing at the varsity level as a sophomore. Not many people could say that. He's going to have so much experience once he does get up to that senior level. Same formation for the Patriots, two wide receivers and Dowling. The deck ball is handed off to Dowling, who cuts it back, spins, and is taken down at the 11 12 yard line. Another productive run by Brian Dowling. Spin cycle for Brian Dowling, making the defender look silly. As we approach the two minutes left in the first quarter, the score is 9 to 6, Wayne Hills. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw another run to Dallin. It's they'll stop doing it once it stops working. He's just spinning through, running through kids, and possibly coming away with a touchdown on this drive. Second and four, the Wayne Hills Patriots can get another first down before the end zone. As the ball is handed off again to Dallin, who turns it to the left. Touchdown! Brian Dallin, the sophomore, his first touchdown of the season. I mean, as that Wayne Hills takes a 15 to six lead. That's just huge for a sophomore to come onto the varsity level, your first game, your first start ever, and you score a touchdown. I mean, it's just a lot to be proud of. And, I mean, with Brian Dallin's success, Ronnie Dries could take all the time he wants, get 100%, because Brian Dallin is just showing all that he has right now. Tim Divers on for his second PAT attempt of the season. He made his first. Good snap, kick is up, straight through the uprights. Tim Devers is now two for two on PATs on the season as the Patriots take a 16 to six lead with a minute and 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Like you said before, Sean, you wanna let Ronnie heal up completely. You don't wanna let him make him force anything and strain himself as we'll see the replay. And we're gonna look at the replay here. A strong run by Brian Dowling. All he had to really do was turn the corner. Great job by the offensive line of the Patriots. As I was saying before, you want to make sure that Ronnie's 100%, and especially in a game like Northern Highlands, they're not the best team. You're not versing Ramapo. So, I mean, putting Brian Dowling in, you're going to be fine. And we can see looking down on the sideline, Ronnie Dries is practicing, is jogging. He's got some type of brace on his, it appears, left ankle. Actually, right ankle, I'm sorry. Tim Divers on for the kickoff. And it's another strong kick by Divers, picked up at the five. As the Northern Highlands return man is taken down at the 19 yard line, another good kickoff coverage by this special teams unit. And the special teams has just stepped up. I mean, the total, total re returning yardage for about maybe 30 yards for all three or four returns for Northern Highlands. And uh, one of my keys was special teams and the, they've opened the door with their key. Two juniors, Steve Johnson and James DeLuctus, combined for that tackle. As Northern Highlands approaches the line, Kenny in the shotgun sends a man in motion. And it's handed off to that man in motion who's running the wrong way. Oh, and he's going to throw it. And it's it complete at the 43 yard line. And it appeared to be a broken play, but it ended up working fantastic for the Northern Highlands Highlanders. That play was just perfect for the Northern Highlands. Brian Ogden, he had that receiver covered, but he bit on the run and ran in. Once he ran in, he left Matt to block the first debut varsity starter at safety. He, he was left alone to cover two people, which is a hard task, plus he tripped, as we'll see in the replay. Now, what I see in the replay, I, at first I thought he was going to the outside receiver, but the inside receiver cuts in for the pass. It appeared to be a wounded duck of a pass, and it actually, the intended receiver was, it was way underthrown, but a different receiver caught the ball. As this one is handed off to Santry, who runs left and is tackled for a gain of two. I don't know, uh, what I've seen from Northern Highlands has just all been in shotgun. I don't know what they're running, but what, the, what their playbook is, but shotgun, I guess, is working for them. I think that it's all the pressure, the endless amount of pressure that's coming from the yeah, D-line and the linebacker and the blitzes. So it'll be just second and eight. I'm sorry, Brian. It's a little tough to hear up here. <laughs> I apologize. It's just causing the quarterback to get so much pressure, he doesn't have time to give the ball off, so they got to go in shotgun to give him a few more seconds. Kenny under center, one back behind him. And it's handed off to North Island running back who breaks through for a solid run of about six or seven. It'll be third and short for the Highlanders with 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 
every time that quarterback drops back, there's at least one Wayne Hills Patriot waiting to tackle him. On that, you could see him. They always stop on the run just because they don't want a flag called. But every time, they're in the backfield waiting for something to happen. And if that running back broke that tackle, he could have been gone all the way or at least another five yards. So it'll be third and two for the Highlanders, but that will not be until the second quarter because the first quarter has just ended. A good start for Wayne Hills as they go into the second quarter with a 16 to six lead. So guys, what do you think of the first quarter of the season for the Patriots? At first, I was doubting what the Patriots were doing, what they were practicing, because that first play just broke down and the defense just broke down right there. But other than that, they have come back and shown their true colors and done a great job. I mean, tonight, there's obviously, we talked about, there's a lot of new spots being filled by new people. A lot of them are stepping up, such as Brian Ogden on defense, all, all them, Brian Downey, Mike Quinn, but I mean, some of them still are getting used to that position. And now let's take a look at the realignment proposal for next year. As you can see, it's still in question, currently on hold. You would have Wayne Hills, Wayne Valley, DePaul, West Milford, Passaic Valley, and Lakeland in the division. The NBIL would be no more, as all these Bergen County teams that Wayne Hills usually plays is the Ramapos, the Mawas, the Ultapans, Demarests, the Northern Highlands, Indian Hills. they no longer be playing those teams. They'd be playing teams located in Passaic County, which geographically makes more sense. What do you guys think about that? Especially for me, for the away games, driving is going to be a lot easier. I don't have to go all the way down to Ulta Pan. And, I mean, Wayne Valley is right next to us. But other than that, yeah, West Milford is a hike, though. But all I have to say is there's going to be some good rivalries if this, if this goes into effect. In terms of the season and the teams and the quality, I would just like to see the schedule stay as it is. I like Hills versus Ramapo and Ulta Pans. I think those games are more exciting. They have history with those teams. And, Brian, that's a good point. You know, with the new alignment, Wayne Hills Rampo is a huge rivalry. You could kind of compare it to uh, Red Sox Yankees. And with the realignment, it's almost as if the Yankees Red Sox rivalry will be replaced with a Yankees Mets rivalry. It'll still be a big rivalry, but it's really tough to just completely destroy the old rivalry of Wayne Hills Rampo, as Wayne Hills Wayne Valley would be the, like the Mets Yankees instead of Yankees Red Sox. This ruins the history. The second quarter is ready to begin as Highland starts from the Patriots 48 yard line. Handoff is to Santry, who's tackled down as forward progress is a stop at the Patriots 48 yard line, so no gain on that. And that was just a great tackle. I mean, he stopped all movement of the running back and great play for uh, Wayne Hill's defense. That's a huge stop on third down and two, the defensive line just be able to stuff the line like that. They've been doing it all game. Defense is playing a great great game so far. I apologize, that was not Brendan Santry on the run. It was the sophomore, Zach Ross Nash. As the Highlanders will punt, Horahan is deep to receive the punt. Another good punt, high. Horahan receives it at the 13 yard line, runs up the sideline, shakes one tackler, still on his feet. And it's taking down the 26-yard line, a productive, kick, a produ productive punt return by Horahan. And if we could get a replay of that, that was just, there was a big block by the Wayne Hills special teams on that play to clear some space up for Justin. It was a great job by Justin to keep the ball in bounds. A punter was trying to get it out of bounds at the 10. And he would have almost succeeded if Horahan was not able to reach out and grab the ball and bring it up for a productive game. Mark Romeo enters the offensive huddle as it appears the Patriots will go into a three wide receiver set with Ogden, Horahan, and Romeo on this opening play of the second quarter. Now let's look, oh, and we have a replay. And quickly, we're gonna see the replay here. I see Horahan make the catch, and there he makes a great spin. Great block. Ball's handed off to Dowling with not much room to run. He's taken down for a minimal gain Maybe no gain or maybe one. That was the first time tonight that the defense was able to stuff the run and not allow Dowling especially to get up the Dowling yard for any gains. Now what I'm confused about is why not start Tom, uh, play Tom, Tom DiBiaka. I know Dowling's doing great, but you also have Tom and I don't know, Dowling might get a little tired, but maybe Tom has an injury or something. And even Ronnie, Ronnie could come back and play. It'll be second and 10 for the Patriots from their own 26 yard line. Brian Dickman in motion. Play action. Quinn throws on the run and it's incomplete, intended for Brian Dickman. 
That would have been a gain of approximately three or four before Dickman with the rack yards run after the catch. So it'll remain at third and 10 for the Patriots from their own 26. Now that was a great looking play. Brian was just wide open, but maybe, I don't know, the, the slipperiness of the weather made him drop the ball. But that was, if they it, third and 10, let's see what they do. Let's look at the other Brian on that play. Brian Dowling was able to lay out the blitz coming from the right side that would have tackled Mike Quinn on the pass. Eye formation behind Quinn, two wide receivers. Quinn drops back to pass. Big block by Dowling, and the ball's incomplete intended for Brian Ogden down the left side. That would have been enough for the first down. Good defensive play by the Highlanders, as the Patriots will have to punt. Now I think that was just an example of how the rain comes into this game. Brian Ogden was able to jump up against the defender. He was able to catch the ball, and as he was coming down with it, it slipped out of his arms. Yeah, I mean, great. Great ability for Brian to jump up and catch the ball, but I don't know, just couldn't, just, just wasn't able to finish. A pair of five foot eight seniors are back to return this punt. Brendan Santry and Kevin Caron on the 31, 32 yard line for the Highlanders. Brian Ogden in for the punt for the Patriots. Good snap, punt is up, and it's a nice long punt. Picked up by Caron, dropped at the 33 yard line, which prevents any further gain of yardage. Now what it looked like is he, I saw his head lift up and I think he saw the pressure and was just nervous as you saw a load of pressure coming and ready to put, lay a big hit on him. He was here in the footsteps. Well, it's understandable. I too, if I was in that position, would most likely drop the ball if I saw a maroon wall coming my way. <laughs> now being five foot eight, uh, any any Wayne Hills defender must be frightening, even Justin Orhan. Highlands will start from their own 38 yard line, first and 10, Kenny in the gun, three wide receivers. Kenny drops back to pass, and it is overthrown, intended for number five, Brendan Santry. That was a great job by Matt DeBlock there, the cut into the lane of the receiver, and he was able to, if that pass had been accurate, he would have been able to dodge it. Yeah, that was a great play by the Wayne Hills defense, shutting down that play, even though it was a little thrown, uh, thrown a little bit higher. Maybe if the way, if uh, the Northern Highlands receiver didn't see all that pressure, maybe he could have jumped up and caught it. And that's a mistake by the quarterback, Kevin Kenny, as Santry was wide open. He found a gap in the defense. That would have been enough for the first down or just about to it. Second and 10 for the Highlanders, three wide receivers. Kenny runs to his right, looking for someone to throw to, and it's complete for the first down. As number 13, Albert Frouseron gets the tackle, caught by number six, Kevin Caron. That was a great job there by the Northern Highlands receiver to stay in bounds on that catch. It was to the outside. He was able to cut back up and stop his momentum to stay in bounds. The pass was actually complete number four, David Goyen, I'm sorry. The the fours and the sixes and the eights, they just, they look alike on the back of these Northern Highlands jerseys. Yeah, don't worry then, it happens to the best of us. Now it's second and 10. What do you think? If, do you think Wayne Hills is gonna stay back and cover, stay back and for, uh, for defense? But now they got the first down, but what do you do? Do you think they should be blitzing more or just staying back in coverage? I mean, I don't think they should be blitzing right now. Their defensive line's doing a marvelous job of getting pressure on the quarterback. So I think right now it's time to push your DBs back. Hope that rely on your defensive line to get those bad passes thrown off and then hope that your extra cornerbacks or safeties like Matt DeBlock will be able to come up and make the catch. First down for the Hollanders as they work from their own 48-yard line. Three wide receivers, eye formation behind Kenny. As the ball is handed off with no running room and a huge loss as the Wayne Hills Patriots defense penetrated into the backfield, but I do see a flag down. So we'll see how this, oh, maybe not a flag. Yeah, no flag. Something went down. I'm not 100% sure what. Maybe it's confetti. <laughs> that sack certainly made up for the first down the Patriots gave up before. Maybe, you know, maybe I don't know, but maybe that was something to show where the forward progress was stopped. Not 100% sure. Maybe they throw something down to show where the forward progress was stopped because the ball is right now much closer to where the last scrimmage, the original last scrimmage, than where the tackler was, the, the running back was actually on the ground. So it'll be second and 17, a loss of seven for the Highlanders. K 
Kenny. Quick pass left, complete, not complete. Will this be a fumble or incomplete pass? It'll be an incomplete pass as possession was never maintained by the receiver who was number five, Brendan Santry. Now you see on that play, Mike Waller, number eight, comes in to deliver a hard hit on him when if he in fact stayed back, he might have been able to get that tip and come away with the interception. But that's just the Patriots' nature. Always go for the hard hit and force a fumble. So it'll be third and 17 for the Highlanders. Long third down conversion needed here. As the Highlanders approach the line, four wide receivers in for the Highlanders. Kenny fakes the pass and hands off to the running back for a very short gain. And just, oh, I'm just confused right now that they ran it on third and 17. I don't know what the offensive coaches are thinking. You know, I, I, I have to think on that play, they pretty much just decided that they were not going to get the first down with the pass, and they decided to protect the ball, keep it out of the Patriots' hands, try to get some yards on the run, maybe help out the punter a little bit. High snap. Punt is off, it's a high punt, not very much distance as it goes out of bound at the 41 yard line. Not a great punt there for the Hounders. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened on that punt, but I, I think it's the multiple high snaps coming to the punter. I think that right now the Highlanders, although they have, that last drive wasn't their best, I think that right now they're not in horrible position considering they're coming up against an undefeated Wayne Hills Patriots. They went 0-10 last year, and right now it's, we're almost in the halftime, and they're only down 10 points. It's not that big of a deficit. Yeah, and right now Wayne Hills has to score on this drive as they get the ball back in, at the end of the half, at the, in the second half, and it'll be just a huge momentum shift if they score on this drive. Two wide receivers in for the Patriots. Pass! Play action, Quinn drafted pass. Throws it deep down the right side of the field. Antenna for Justin Horahan. A jump ball and it's incomplete. As it appeared as Justin Horahan may have been the defender on that play as the Northern Highlands cornerback appeared to actually have a better shot at the ball. But the great jumping ability by Justin Horahan prevented the Northern Highlands player from intercepting it. It seems that right now Mike Quinn's only fault, he's throwing great balls, it's just that he's throwing them a little to the inside. He's got to get work on his placement a little bit more. Get it to the outside so his receivers like Ogden and Horan, they have the ups, the ability to get up there and make those catches. They're, he's Right now he's throwing up good spiral balls. They're balls that are catchable, but he's just got to work on his placement a little bit more. And definitely, like you said, that he should just lead them more because these are great athletes that he has on uh, to throw to. I agree. He's got a live arm, a lot of juice on those throws. Ball is handed off to Dowling, who makes it, cuts it back. Big run, turns out the outside, stiff arm, dragging a defender with him before he's tackled at the 31-yard line. Great run by the sophomore Brian Dowling as he dragged number 23, Colin Coates, for about six or seven extra yards. That was just unbelievable play. Offensive line getting a great hole, and I know, the reason these running backs are running great is not only their speed, their athleticism, but the athleticism of the, of the offensive line. If you watch the first few drives of this game on the Patriots, you would think that it's going to be the game of Ronnie Juris. But, I mean, after that injury, Brian Dowling, he's just stepping up very big right now. And he's getting a lot of yards. Quinn hands it off to Dowling again, right up the middle, and he's tackled for about a five-yard gain at the 16-yard line with closing into eight minutes in this first half. Until Highlands can prove that they can stop Brian Dowling on the run, there's really no reason to change it for the Patriots. There's no reason to go to the pass. Yeah, especially with the running back like Brian Dowling, who just at this point can't be stopped. So it'll be second and six for the Patriots as they work from the Highlanders' 27-yard line. Matt Rubin, the center, approaches the ball. Quinn under center, two wide receivers and two men behind him. Play action, Quinn moving back, pressure is on. Breaks out to the right, and it's complete as Justin Horhan makes the catch still on his feet as tackled the five yard line. Another broken play, a deflection, and the ball lands in the hands of Justin Horhan. Look what I found. I am just speechless right now that Justin Horhan was able to come away with that. There were so many factors that came into account in that play. First, we'll start off with Mike Quinn. He was able to elude the defender as he got, received a block from number 55, Ryan Salerno, I believe. But then. He throws it, and he throws it into coverage, which is tipped, and Horahan somehow is able to come away with it, as we'll see right here on the replay. 
on the five yard line. Now, at first, I thought he crossed the line of scrimmage, but great instincts. It was a great throw by Quinn again on the scramble. Brian Ogden on the run, his first rushing attempt of the game as he's taken down at the four yard line, a gain of one. He is just all around worker, receiver, return man. You know, running back right here as you saw. And Brian Ogden showing all that he can do. You make a great point, he's an extremely versatile player. As a freshman, he played some running back before a serious ankle injury. He's also, they've mentioned in the newspapers, that in the media, that he actually can play some quarterback. So we may see some of that in this game, maybe not, maybe we'll see it in the future. Maybe some wide receiver passes. And again, Brian Ogden is the tailback on this play as he gets the ball and bursts into the end zone for a touchdown. Brian Ogden with his second touchdown of the game as the Wayne Hills Patriots take a 22-6 lead. Right now the Patriots are just clicking. Everything's working in their favor. Mike Quinn's able to elude. He's able to get the pass off. The run's able to get down. They're just successful in everything they're doing right now. And I think Brian Ogden may be one of the only people in my memory uh, to score a touchdown running and receiving. I know there's QBs that throw and run for a touchdown, but this is the first time I saw a receiver that scored for a passing and a running touchdown. And the PAT is converted by Tim Divers. He's now 3-for-3 three three on the game, 3-for-3 three three on the season, keeping his percentage up to 100. It's pretty perfect. As perfect as you can be. Divers has proven himself pretty reliable so and far. Sean, you mentioned earlier that um, Brian Ogden, with the running touchdown and the receiving touchdown, kind of... Reminiscent of past years, Danny DeSico, often with receiving and rushing touchdowns. Also, Jeremiah Kale and Carlton Marson. And here's another replay of that wacky play. Great instincts by Brian. I mean, um, Quinn. But Brian Dickman got hit hard on that play. Yeah, he just got laid out. As Divers is on for the kickoff. Again, great job to our crew downstairs. Uh, Mike Bowenick on the replay. If you enjoy that slow motion, that's Michael Bowenick at work. Final cut at its finest. At your service. Another strong kickoff by Divers. This one's picked up at the eight yard line and again dropped by the Highlands kickoff man. And that will blow the, blow the play dead. In the NFL, if that happened, he would be able to pick the ball up and keep running. In high school football, when the ball touches the ground, it's dead. Even if someone doesn't touch you down, even if your knee hits the ground, it's automatically dead. You don't need to have a defender touch you down like in the NFL. I think that mainly it was caused by his knee touching the ground. The Northern Highlands is improving themselves very well on the receiving and the special teams. They're bobbling a lot of balls, dropping them. I don't know. The Patriots' def defense must be just getting to them. Yeah, just getting their heads, playing mind games with them freaking them out or something. Maybe they're saying something at the line. That's a good point, Brian. What I just said is completely false. What I said would mean that there's no fumbles in high school football, and that's obviously not true. There's, uh, there are fumbles, so the ball can hit the ground. It's just your knee cannot hit the ground. I think he slipped on the play, and his knee accidentally touched the ground. The ball's handed off to the Highlands runner, and he's tackled down at about the 11-12 yard line, another short gain for the Highlanders. And the running back kind of tripped on that play, uh, maybe losing some acceleration for him. The sophomore, Zach Ross Nash, was on that run. And Coach Licurdo for the Highlanders did mention that Zach Ross Nash got some playing time as a freshman last year, and was a really, he really raised some eyebrows. He's been had a great summer. He's gonna get a lot of reps this year, and he really, only, he really can, he can only grow. He's got a bright future at running back. Three wide receivers for the Highlanders, second and seven. As well as handed off again, and not much daylight to run for the Highlanders as the Wayne Hills Patriots collapse down for a short gain. It'll be third and seven, no gain. I really do not see the point in the Highlanders running right now. I mean, the clock's running down to halftime. You're going to want to score because then the Patriots will get it back, and they're basically guaranteed another score. But, I mean, they have a significant lead right now. They're stuffing the run every time. I don't see why you're running. You should be passing. Yeah, definitely, especially if you run, I mean, shotgun formation, halfback draws, you should be doing at least something in the eye formation. So you give your running back some room and you give your offensive lineman some time to open up some spaces. Kenny drops back to pass, throws, and it's incomplete intended for number three, Dave Lohman. And that's, again, 
an incomplete pass should have been caught. Should have, the pass should have been made, whether it's on the wide receiver or the quarterback. It looked like Loman slipped. It looked like the pass was thrown a little too far for Loman by Kenny. But again, that's a play that these Highlanders have to convert. They can't. They have to capitalize on mistakes by the Patriots. Absolutely. On that play, I also noticed that number 13, Albert Falzarano, bit to the outside, which allowed the receiver to cut in and go for the pass, which he would have had had he not been led too far. Another good punt by the Highlanders. This one's caught by Brian Ogden, his own 48-yard line. Shakes a tackle, moving up the field, trying to go down the left sideline, but there's no room. He's taken out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. With 4.48 to go in this opening half, the score is 23-6, Patriots. And if they if they score on this drive, with and which most likely they will with this great field position, this will give them, uh, I believe, three three possession game for Wayne Hills and getting the ball back, they can just make an uh, insurmountable lead against uh, Northern Highlands. It would actually make it a four possession game as Wayne Hills would be up 30 to six, which would mean they're down by three touchdowns and a field goal. Two wide receivers right for the Patriots. Play action, Quinn rolling to his right, looking down the field, intent for Brian Ogden, and it's thrown a little high. As it's incomplete, it'll be second and 10 from the 45 yard line. I think on that play, Mike's trying to adjust his throw accordingly to his receivers, such as Brian Ogden, who in the past receptions has been jumping up for those balls, but in this reception, he cut back a little bit, which caught his forward motion, wouldn't let, allow him to jump up for the ball like Mike expected. And again, Quinn was uh, like on the move on that play, so I mean, you, it's, it's a little harder to throw the ball. Personally, I'd like to see some options right now with Mike. He's a pretty fast quarterback, and he has a strong arm, but I would like to see him run some options with uh, Ronnie. Yeah, with an athletic team like this, you should see some crazy plays. Quinn drops back to pass. Pressure coming, rolls to his left, throws deep down the field, high, intended for Justin Horahan, and he's caught, and there's a flag thrown that's definitely defensive pass interference as Justin Horahan was pushed from behind. He's grabbing his thigh on that play. Maybe Charlie Horace or maybe just hit hard. Once again, an outstanding job from Mike Quinn. He's not really receiving anything from his offensive line. The pressure just keeps coming and coming. And he's able to elude every defender. He throws up a pass. I mean, he just threw about a 30, 35-yard reception on the run. I mean, not many quarterbacks have the ability to do that. As we'll see on the replay right now, we'll see Justin Horahan get hit from behind. See Quinn breaks the tackle. Gets, takes a hit after the play, too. Landed wrong. Ooh. And that's not even, I'm not really even sure what the defender is doing. That's not even remotely close to good defense. That's obviously defensive pass interference. You can't push a guy from behind. I'm not really sure what he was thinking on that play. You're going to get called for that every time. They should have read my keys. One of them was play smart. Good, they're not playing smart right now. That's an automatic first down for the Patriots, as it's now first and 10 from the 30. The handoff is to Dowling, who's taken down for a loss of about one, and that'll result in a second and 11. Yeah, he tried to cut cut back on, on that play, go back into the middle, but just met up with the defender. And if you guys are wondering who that giant in the huddle is, it's number 54, Chris Fonte. Uh, just a monstrous creature, uh, you know. Just one of I play I played night hockey with them, a street hockey league, and he is just an enormous guy. It'll be second eleven for the Patriots. Quinn back to pass, quick throw to Ogden at the court, the thirty-one yard line, and he's taken down at the twenty-seven yard line. A pass completion of about six or seven yards. It'll be third and four, third and six actually. Right now with a lead like this, I think the smart thing to do is to let Quinn get some game time experience, get him throwing those balls off just so he can get comfortable with his team, get comfortable playing in a varsity situation. And we're going to have this play blown dead prior to the snap. Number six was running to the sideline. It appeared that the Highlanders were in confusion, but they caught it, and they did call a timeout to avoid the penalty, and that's key because third and six, I don't know if that would have given them the automatic first down, but if not an automatic first down, it would have been third and one, which is pretty big than third and six. Now let's take a look at the trivia answer now. Paulsboro High School is 63. Well, that means that the Wayne Patriots will need 23 more wins to tie that 24 to take the state lead. 
I actually have a few classes with the quarterback, Mike Quinn, and uh, I was talking to him about the streak and what he has to do to keep it alive. He was telling me that if they keep the streak for this year and next year, their last game, Mike's last senior game, will be 64, which is huge for a quarterback just to win two seasons straight undefeated like the Patriots have. And, I mean, he'll have the record under his belt, just another thing to add. If any of you are sitting at home and wondering, well, if that's the state record, who is the national record? Well, De La Salle in California has a national record at 123 wins. That's more than triple what Wayne Hills has right now. So it's easy. It's safe to say that's a long way from now. And it's not like we knew that play from our heads. We got it from our, our great trivia man, Mr. Hookstreet. Quinn drops back to pass. Play fake. Throws it to the left side to the corner, 10 for Ogden, Ooh. and it's incomplete. Now on that play, I think that the ball was perfect. I think it was just Ogden's fault there not catching the ball. He was one-on-one -on -one with the defender. Maybe he got a little nervous. But another thing I'd like to point out is James Dietelectis. Whenever he seems to be in on the play at fullback, it seems he's going up to block for Mike just to give him that extra time since he's not really relying on the offensive line. It'll be fourth and three from the 23-yard line as the Patriots are going for it. So we won't see Tim Divers try to make his first field goal of the season. Quinn, Quinn back to pass, throwing into the end zone, 10 for Ogden, and it's incomplete. As there'll be turnover on downs, and the Highlanders will take over at the 23-yard line with three minutes and 10 seconds to go in the half. Right now, I think Mike needs to change up his receiver call. He's throwing to Ogden every play, especially on a deep play. He's got to diversify a little bit, throw to Horan, and allow his other receivers to catch the ball just because they're double covering Ogden right now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the coaches were thinking. Maybe they wanted to just boost the score up, but a field goal at that point would just be great for them. But I guess they're relying on their defense to stop him right now. Two wide receivers in for the Hollanders, Loman and Karan. Kenny hands off to Loman. Again, I'm sorry, that's actually Ross Nash, who breaks a couple tackles and is tackled at the 35-yard line. There's a flag down in the vicinity of offensive of holding. I believe on the fullback. That was a great play by the running back. Good call, Brian. And it is. It is offensive holding on the Northern Highland. So that great run by Zach Ross Nash will come back. Back to what you said before, Sean, on why they didn't kick the field goal. I think I may have some sort of idea. As we said before, it was a four-possession game, three touchdowns, and a field goal. If they had taken that other field goal, it would have put them up by six, not another touchdown. But in the end, points are points, but I think that was their thinking behind it. Ten-yard penalty from the point of the infraction. It'll be a ten-yard penalty from the point of infraction, so it'll be... The ball's going to be spotted at the 14-yard line of the Highlanders, first and 20. It's definitely not good field position. <laughs> Kenny under center. Play action, throwing on the run, and it's incomplete. That pass intended for number 35, Zachary Riker. And that's just that's just the, the what's it called the receiver running, thinking he has the ball before he has it in his hands. You know what I'm saying? Like running in his mind, thinking he has the ball, looks trying to see what he has next, not focusing on catching the ball. I think this Northern Highlands teams, a lot of their failure comes. They need to go back to basics. They're bubble, they're bobbling punt returns, they're dropping catches and running with it before they had it. Like Sean said, they need to go back to basics. It'll be second and 20 from their own 14. Handed off to Santry, running to his right. He gains four or five of the yards, but it's still going to be third and long because of the penalty. Yeah, that was a dagger to the heart for Northern Highlands. Trying to score before the half ends, but that penalty just ruin their momentum. If they keep playing as it is, it seems that they're going to turn over the ball back to Wayne Hills and they'll probably have decent field position as they had on the last drive. But that's just going to put them into the two-minute drill and we'll see what Quinn's really made of and if he could score before the half's over. 
And Wayne Hills just took a timeout with two minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the opening half of the 2008-2009 season. Wayne Hills is winning 23-6. to six. And at this point, guys, who do you think has stepped up the most for Wayne Hills? I mean, I think that it's split, honestly. In the beginning, I thought it was going to be Ronnie, but then he got hurt, so I think it went over to Dowling. But then Quinn started playing good. It went to Quinn. Ogden had a few great catches. I think there's a lot of players that are playing good right now. Nobody's playing spectacular. Who do you have, Dan, for your key player? You know, I have to say the sophomore, Brian Dowling, has really impressed me. I, I honestly, I, I didn't know that he would be, I didn't know how high he was in the depth chart coming in. I did read that he had a great summer and was really proving to the coaches that he could play. And, you know, he's got a bright future. He's playing great. I think Ronnie's injury played a big toll in that decision. But even then, they didn't put in Tom DeBianca. And we see Brian Dowling's now on in defense. Outside linebacker. Handoff is to Karan as he runs to his left. He's tackled down by number eight, Mike Waller. Another timeout by Wayne Hills. And that will be the final timeout available for Wayne Hills to use in the first half. Is there a two minute warning in high school football? I have no idea. <laughs> I'm really not aware. So I'm not really sure why they're calling so many timeouts to stop the clock, especially if there is a two-minute warning. In fact, when the clock stops in 30 seconds, I'm not really sure their reasoning behind that, using all up all their timeouts before they even get on offense. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian. In 28 more seconds of game time, we're going to find out. All right. It's going to be the best 28 seconds of my life. <laughs> it's going to be suspenseful because, you know, yeah. on one hand it's like, uh, is there going to be a two-minute warning or... Is there not going to be a two-minute warning? Who knows? I'm sure there's some viewers out there. I'm sure Dave Suntop is watching from Syracuse, criticizing us that we don't know that. It's probably Sorry, shouting Dave. at the computer screen, oh, there's a two-minute warning, or no, there's not a two-minute warning. Sorry, Dave. Well, I don't think he's watching right now. It's not a live feed, but maybe... Tomorrow well, night. Yeah, tomorrow night, Saturday, Channel 77, for all you Wayne viewers. Check us out. Check the game if you missed anything. Ogden and Horahan back to receive the punt. Another good pump by Highlands as Justin Horahan picks up at the 43-yard line, running behind his blocker, Brian Ogden, who makes a great block, and Justin is still running, turns the corner and tackled down at the opponent's 43-yard line. A good run by Justin Horahan. In terms of the pair on the punt return with Ogden and Horahan, I think that it's better off just giving the ball to Horahan. Ogden obviously has size on him, and I think he could hit a little bit harder. No disrespect to Horahan. Horahan's faster, and I think with Brian Ogden leading block, Horahan did a great job on that play of bouncing off Brian Ogden as he delivers the block just to gain that extra 10 or 15 yards, which in the end adds up. But again, great punt by the punter. I mean, when there's a regular snap, that punter just booms it. Patriots regain the ball at the Highlanders' 42-yard line. First and 10. Quinn drops back to pass. Plenty of time. Breaks a tackle, and now he's going to run for it towards the sidelines. He's going to be taken down, out, taken out the sidelines. That seemed like a dirty hit by Northern Highlands. They went after his legs after he was clearly out of bounds, and he was running out of bounds. There was no necessary for that. But again, smart play by uh, Quinn to run out of bounds immediately once he came out of the pocket. Because you never know in this weather that if you, if you run into the defenses, you can get hurt. You also don't want to risk an injury yeah, being definitely. the quarterback. It's not really worth that extra two yards, even if he broke the tackle. Second and nine for the Patriots. Three wide receivers, one man in the backfield. Quinn back to pass. Here comes the pressure. Dumps it off to Brian Dowling, complete. And he spins away from a tackler, still on his feet. And he's taken down at the 36, 37 yard line. Good run by Brian Dowling. Made a not he made a lot out of not a little. And but Brian Dowling has got that spin cycle down. I mean, just juking left and right, spinning people, making the Northern Highlands players dizzy. I would just like to I point just out myself in my mind with that double negative. I'm not really even sure what I said. There is no two minute warning, Dan, just so you know. Handoff is to Dowling as he breaks through and into the secondary, cuts back, still on his feet. And I think that one came out. Fumble, the Highlanders are going crazy. They do get the ball. As it's the second fumble lost for the Patriots so far this game. One by Drees early, another by Dowling there. 
And with a minute 24 seconds remaining in the opening half, the Highlanders will take over possession at their own 34-yard line. I guess that's just another example of how that rain is affecting this game. I mean, on the pass, Mike's getting a lot of pressure from the D-line, so I think, but he's been successful. He's throwing those screens, he's throwing those deep passes on the run, so I think that they should keep doing that. First and 10 for the Highlanders. Kenny under center, two wide receivers. The ball is handed off to Zach Ross Nash, who's taken down for a short gain of maybe one or two. Again, great play by the Wayne Hills defense and Northern Highlands, if you can hear calls for a trainer. I don't know what the injury was. I don't know if I saw it or not, but calling for a trainer and is, must be important. And as you see on the screen, the amazing athletic trainer for the Patriots, Margaret Daugherty, is going across to the Northern Highlands side. Always line. willing Hopefully to help. That there's not, not a serious injury. She was always on her game. Another another big factor for Wayne Hills in this season is Margaret's having her step up during the season. Second and ten for the Highlanders. Ball is handed off to Ross Nash. Hits the hole and is tackled down for a gain of three or four. And Ross Nash, Ross Nash is just a truck. I mean, he is just breaking tackles. I mean, he eventually goes down after like two or three guys get on him, but the first tackle has always been broken. Right now, I think that Northern Highlands for the half is admitting defeat. They just want to run out the clock. They don't want the Patriots to score any more points than they have to already. I mean, they're going to get the ball at the half. They pretty, they're pretty sure that they're going to score then, so they're just running out the clock. And at this point, that I believe that is the safest option so, cause, because you don't want any turnovers or any fumbles that may lead to touchdowns. Zach Ross Nash is 5'10", 180. He's a big guy, power runner, with some speed. 15 seconds remaining in the opening half. Kenny hands off again to Ross Nash with no room to run as his forward progress is stopped for a loss as the opening half of the 2008-2009 Wayne Hills Patriots season will come to a close with the Patriots ahead of the Highlanders 23-6. So guys, I have to ask you, beginning of the game, the Patriots looked a little jittery. Maybe some butterflies in the, butterflies in the stomach for uh, opening half, a lot of new players. Guys, how do you think they came back from that? I mean, I think it's just Olsen putting it in their heads that they have to step up and win this game. It's a, it's an opener, and they just got to go as hard as they can for the next, I don't know, next half that they don't lose the lead and that they increase the lead for this game. I think what you were talking about before, the pregame jitters, as you call them, the first quarter, I think that was just this, the players getting used to playing in the varsity. A lot of them are new, like we said, various times. A lot of them are filling new positions. But I think overall the Patriots have been pretty successful in filling those new positions with the legends that filled them last year. And we can look at the score. It's 23-6. to six. That's a pretty, that's pretty big this game and last game. Final score was 63-0. Sixty-three zero. Do you think the Patriots is lead? I mean, they had a scare in the beginning, and lead for them. It's not comfortable, but it it gives them a more relaxing feeling that they're and try something different, maybe with knowing the without without knowing the fact that they might get the turnover or anything. I'm going to agree with you there, Sean. I mean, I think they could be comfortable with the lead they have. They have a pretty big deficit. But I don't think they're as comfortable as in to put in a backup quarterback or anything like that to take Mike Quinn out. I think at this point they might be able to experiment, as Sean said, with some trick plays, maybe some options or something to see Mike run. But at this point, they're comfortable, but they shouldn't be too comfortable as in to substitute their second string in. Well, with the score 23-6 to six at the end of the first half, we're going to send it to break. And when we come back, I'm going to have an interview with a fantastic sports writer, Rich Stambulian. Welcome back to Patriot Stadium, everybody. I'm Dan Cohen. 
And here with me is a sports writer, Rich Dambulian. Now, Rich, uh, first question I want to ask you is, um, what's the outlook for the Patriots this season? How's it looking? I think that looks pretty good. Um, you know, Coach, yes, Coach Olson that question, and he usually says, I think we have a chance to be pretty good. Um, he's always cautious about that, you know, never assuming anything. Um, but especially when you lose a lot of kids, a lot of skilled kids, terrific two-way players like uh, Jeremiah Kale, Carl Marson, Danny DeSico, Mike Giampapa, um, Mike, you know, two years as a quarterback. You're always going to have questions when you when you lose that many kids that you have to replace. But the strength of this program is they always have kids ready to step in and, you know, fill the fill the gap. So it really depends on how how well the younger guys step into those positions on both sides of the ball and do their jobs. Um, looking around the NBIL and with the realignment, we may be looking at the NBIL for the last time. Right. Who do you see as the toughest opponents for the Patriots? Probably Ramapo because uh, the general consensus is that they're going to continue their way back to where they were previously. So that game in week three shapes up to be a, a real tough battle. And you can always count on a, on a tough physical game from Old Japan. Um, I know the, the, the coaches are looking at, at Old Japan as a team that's, if they, if they slip a little bit, it's not going to be very much. So those two are probably, um, you know, the, the, the two toughest. And then you have Mawa, you know, who gave the Patriots everything that he could have asked for and maybe a little more last year. So those three teams probably are going to pose the biggest challenges in the league. Coming into the season, the, the biggest story probably on offense had to, probably was the quarterback, uh, Mike Giampapa, a two-year starter, graduated. And uh, Mike right. Quinn, a junior, has now stepped in at, in the starting role. How do you think he looked in the first half, and what's the outlook for him this season? He looked pretty poised. I think, I think in a couple of plays he made a couple of maybe questionable decisions, didn't quite execute a couple of his throws as well as you'd like to see him to. But, you know, it's his first, it's his first varsity game. Um, could be a little jitters. Might have a little trouble connecting, uh, you know, with his, with his receivers. I think, the, I think the things you saw in the first half – are things that they'll definitely straighten out because because Mike definitely has uh, you know definitely has uh, you know the capability. He's got a strong arm. He's big and tall. He runs well. He's got every all the all the skills that you look for in a quarterback. Uh, one more question, Rich. Um, you know, one of the most obvious new features to this team has to be the field um, field turf, replacing right. the natural get grass that they've always used. Can you see any advantages or disadvantages that maybe this turf will apply to the Patriots? Probably not. Uh, you know, it makes it easier for, for the, the players as well as the coaches, as, as Coach Olson said in, the, in preseason. He says, it just means we don't have to play games in a slop anymore. And the other thing, which I don't think is a real big factor, but might come into play, is when they're playing all their home games on turf, uh, you know, that means they're more acclimated to playing all these other ro road games in the NBIL on, on, uh, where all those other teams except Fairlawn have turf. Well, thanks, Rich. That's Rich Stambulian. We really appreciate your time coming up here. You bet. My pleasure. Thank you. And when we come back, we have second half football. Welcome back to Patriots Dame. Let's look at the first half highlights. Here you can see a safety as Paul Drake tackles the quarterback, Kevin, Ke Ke Kevin Kenny, in the end zone. There's a great play by Justin Horn as he knocks the ball out of David Lohman's hand as a pass is trying to be completed. Quinn rolling to his weak side here, throws across his body and is completed to Brian Ogden. Great play by Quinn. Toss to Dowling as he breaks open for a big run going down the right sideline. Play action by Quinn, he throws deep down the center of the field. Brian Ogden beats his man, catches the ball, runs into the end zone. Unfortunately, that one was called back on a holding call. But again, great play by both Quinn and Ogden on the connection. Another deep pass here by Quinn, intended again for Brian Ogden. And this one, he does catch, no penalties. That play would stand. Run here by Dowling, turns to the left, pulls over a man, power running there. Again, Brian Dowling, this one taking it to the house for his first touchdown as a varsity football player. Zach Ross Nash on this run, and the mar maroon wall smashes him. Brian Ogden picks up a punt here. I'm sorry, Justin Horahan picks up the punt, breaks a few tackles, remains on his feet, and is taken down after a successful run. And again here, just penetration by the defense of the Patriots. 
Dowling on this one, breaks into the secondary. Stiff arm there, drags a man for another six or seven extra yards. Great run by Dowling. And there's a touchdown by Brian Ogden. His second touchdown of the game, his first receiving, that was rushing. Quinn back to pass, pressure coming, rolling to his left, throws it high. Justin Horan makes the catch, and in addition to making the catch, draws a penalty for defensive interference. Great job by Justin Horan. And here's Quinn rolling to his right again, throwing, intended for Brian Dickman. The ball stays in the air and falls into Justin Horan's hands, who almost runs it in for the touchdown as he's tapped at about the five yard line. As we're ready for, almost ready for second half play, guys, before we, before we start, I just want to ask you, you know, what do you think the Patriots, they had a pretty good first half, but there's always room for improvement. What do you think that they can improve on in this half? Possession. They have to keep the offensive possession on their on their side and not let uh, Northern Highlands get the ball because when Northern Highlands get the ball, which it means points, and that's one thing Wayne Hills doesn't want. Obviously, the Patriots have been successful in the first half of play, but as for improvements go, I think that the offensive line really can has room to improve. As you saw in the highlights, there's just every play is Mike Quinn getting pressure. Just more pressure, he's scrambling, rolling out, and throwing off his left foot, throwing off unbalanced, and he's making those catches, which is good for Quinn and his experience. But I mean, right now, you want to have a pocket passer some of the time. You don't want him scrambling out every time, just so. I think if the offense tightens up a little bit, the offensive line, they'll be perfect. It's a young offensive line. In the past, usually the offensive line, most of the guys are seniors. This year, it's three. right now, it's three seniors and two juniors. I think they've played pretty well, and of course, as you guys said, there's always room for improvement, but they're young, they're inexperienced, and they're only going to get better, and they're only going to give Quinn more time in the pocket, and the running backs more room to run. As you see, the captains move back out to the center of the field. Yeah, and you know, like you said, Dan, it's the first game, and if you watch NFL, the first game, there's a lot of false starts and a lot of holding calls on the offense, just like Hills. And Hills just has to go to practice, work on it, and just play play as hard as as hard they can, as hard as they can, and keep their heads in it, and just uh, focus. And uh, who do you think has to step up for the second half for the Wayne Hills Patriots to that they may keep this lead? I mean, right now. Nobody, I don't see anybody that needs to step up drastically. As I mentioned before, they have a lot of players right now, newly filled positions, that are playing. There's a lot of players playing good right now. There's nobody playing spectacular. Like, everybody gets their windows. Ronnie had his window, Brian Dowling's having his, Ogden had his, and Quinn's having him, so on and so forth. So I think right now, nobody even needs to step up specifically. Just keep a constant game of play. Well, the Patriots will start off the second half with the ball, provided they don't fumble on the kickoff return. Brian Ogden and Justin Horahan, uh, maybe that's Mark Romeo, I can't see the number from here. Well, we'll see until uh, the return, see who gets it. I'm not really sure. I think it's Romeo. Not quite sure though. It's a short, low kick. And it's picked up there by, actually, that might be Tom DiBianca or Ronnie Dries. And it's a productive run as it gets to the 36-yard line. That was Tom filling in. And I was completely, yeah, you're right, Tom DiBianca. Yeah. Tom filling in for Ronnie, who right now isn't 100%, obviously, to go back in. Yeah, you know, you see Ronnie walking down the sidelines and jogging a little, but... I don't know. I, a great decision by Cole Johnson to keep him on the sidelines because you have great talent with Brian Dowling, Tom DiBianca, and you just want to make sure that Ronnie is 100% before he goes onto the field. Quinn hands it off to Dowling, who storms up the middle for a game of about five or six. No apparent personnel change on the offense for the Patriots, as it appears that their offense looks the same as the first half. Obviously, the difference being Dowling starting the half in the backfield, whereas Ronnie Dree started in the backfield in the first half. Another thing to add on to Sean's comment, I mean, in two weeks you have Ramapo, which is debatably the biggest game of the season. You want Ronnie, you want Justin Horton 100% to come out and play that game. Second to three for the Patriots, Quinn under center. Hands it off to Dowling, and Dowling is close to the first down marker. We'll, see, we'll have to see where the mark, uh, spot is. From here, it looks like the spot's enough for the first down. We'll see if they bring the chains out. Nope, they're moving the chains, so no doubt, first down, first and 10 for the Patriots coming up. 
great job there, Brian Nelling, trucking forward and getting that first down. Now, I believe the rain has died down a little bit, which is great for the hills and great for our crew downstairs. And uh, this rain will... Uh, We'll, sh we'll see less fumbles and uh, less drop passes. Play action. Quinn looking. Moves up the field. He's going to take it for a run. And he runs out of bounds. Smart play. Game of about five or six. He saw nothing downfield and took it, took it himself and ran out of bounds. That's, that's an intelligent play by a young, inexperienced quarterback. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, Brian, you said it before. Quinn can move. And he's not afraid to run. And he, as you saw, just got a big gain. A lot of new coming quarterbacks, when they're in that position where they have nobody open and there's a pressure coming in, they don't know what to do. They freeze up. But Mike knew when Stink kicks in, and he takes the run up for about seven yards, which a quarterback running out of bounds, that's a pretty good gain. And Mike Quinn just demonstrated the ability to step up in the pocket, something that a lot of quarterbacks aren't too strong in. The handoff is to Dowling straight up the gut, still on his feet, keeping the legs moving, gaining an extra two or three yards after initial contact. That's a good run, and it's enough for a first down. Dallin, another one, He's his instincts are kicking in. I mean, he's not afraid to get hit. These big guys are coming at him varsity level. A lot of the kids are older than him. Most of them are. But he's not afraid to run up the middle and take them head on. And just like Rutgers, they just keep chopping and chopping. But unfortunately, Rutgers didn't chop that well last night as they got <laughs> blown out by UNC. That's a separate issue. Let's hope Wayne Hills doesn't do the same thing. I formation, two wide receivers set. Play action, Quinn rolling to his right, looking for a man downfield. It's incomplete, intended for Brian Dickman. That was just a textbook drop by Brian Dickman. I mean, the, he was wide open. Quinn had all the time in the world. Quinn could have tucked the ball, but as a quarterback, he knows that it's better off just to throw it to your tight end, especially if he's wide open. So it's just a drop by Dickman. He's got to move on. Yeah, and again, smart play by Quinn to not run the ball, not risk injury, not risk fumble, and go for the smart play with the wide open tight end. Two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen, Brian Ogden and Justin Jorge, and there's a toss to Brian Dowling as he's tackled by a bunch of Northern Highlands defenders. Short gain, and it's going to be third and about five coming up for the Patriots. Big play coming up here. Wade Hills has to, has to convert on this play to uh, keep their chances for scoring another touchdown. Guys, with it being third and five, it's pretty even. What do you think they're going to do, run or pass? I'm saying play action pass to either Ogden or Justin. You never know. Well, the play action, it's, it's worked pretty well in this game, especially that play action bootleg where uh, Quinn rolls out to either his, whether, whether it's his strong side or his weak side. He's proven that he can throw from both sides. Two wide receivers for the Patriots. Quinn looks for a quick pass, doesn't find it. He's going to keep it, runs up the middle, breaks a tackle, and he's now turned the corner, and he's taken down from behind at the 21-yard line. Fantastic run by Mike Quinn as he gains the first down and extra yardage. Great run by Mike there, but the defender got a little hesitant there. I mean, he almost had a horse collar on Mike. He grabbed him by the jersey, tucking down his jersey. I mean, you got to be careful on that play. That is a huge penalty that can result in a lot of yards. And, uh, again, great decision by Brian Dowling. He had, the, I mean, uh, Mike, Mike Quinn having, he had a nice swing pass to the right, but instead took it and ran it for a sure first down. It'll be first and 10 for the Patriots. They're two yards outside of the red zone. I formation, Dowling is the tailback. And a handoff is to Dowling, who goes to the right side and dives for an extra two or three yards as he's going to be spotted down at the 16-yard line. A game of about six. It should be th second and four coming up. You know, this is just great offensive production by uh, Wayne Hills. Like I said before, before the start of the half, they have to keep the possession with them so that they may score more touchdowns and uh, waste some clock. And that is just exactly what Wayne Hills has done this, uh, this game. Mark Romeo, wide receiver, checks in as James D. Delect as a fullback checks out. So... Man in motion, that's Brian Ogden. And the ball is handed off to Brian Ogden as he breaks a tackle but cannot get through completely as he's taken down. Either no gain or maybe a loss there. 
And it's gonna be a, a mid-range third down attempt for the Patriots coming up. You could tell just in the second half alone compared to the first half, Mike Quinn is a lot more comfortable. He's not staying in the pocket like he was on the first few drives in the first half where he was getting sacked. He, was a re he realizes you can't put all your trust in the offensive line. You're not gonna get the blocks you need all the time. So now he's not afraid to scramble and he's not afraid to take the run. He didn't have many runs in the first half, if any. Two wide receivers. Right, Ogden and Horhan. Flag thrown as Dowling breaks through the middle and looks like he has enough for a first down, but we're gonna, we're gonna have to see what this flag is for. It was thrown before, right as the play started, which often indicates, and since they let the play run, that often indicates encroachment or offsides on the defense. So we'll see what the call is, because if it was false start, they usually blow the play dead. And this is against the Pages, I'm not sure what the call is. I don't recognize that, yeah, that hand is, gesture. That is like... So we're going to have to yeah, wait for Mr. Mezzi's call. He did it again, but it's still unknown to me. That Illegal substitution against the Patriots. And if you could see a replay, you can tell, I believe it was number 18 or 19, running off the field as the play was just about to start. Yeah, it's Mark Robio. Three wide receivers in for the Patriots. Brian Ogden sent in motion. They fake it to him. Quinn draws back to pass, throwing to the end zone, intended for Brian Dickman. And that ball looked, appeared to be overthrown slightly as it's incomplete and it's now going to be fourth and ten. I think right there, Mike has to make the adjustment and recognize that the tight end's catching methods and the wide receivers are completely different. Dickman being a tight end, he's a lot bigger. He can't run as fast. He can't make those cuts just like the wide receivers like Ogden can. Mike had Ogden over open for the first down, but he went deep for Dickman and led him just a little too far. He just has to recognize that he can't lead the tight ends as far as he leads Ogden and Horhan. And Wayne knows is going for it, which is shocking to me when they have an easy field goal. Let's see if they com convert. Quinn back to pass, looking to his right, intended for Brian Ogden. And it's a little underthrown as Ogden can't make the catch. It looked like Ogden was open as he made the turn. These are the decisions that may win the game or lose the game for Wayne Hills, especially at this at this point of the game. I mean, you are up 23 to six, but still there are, is a chance of a of a comeback with a quarter and a half left. I mean, Wayne Hills is playing rescue right now. So there's a turnover on downs as the Highlanders will take possession at their own 22-yard line. Seven minutes and 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Kenny with a man right beside him. He's in the gun. Sends a man in motion. And Kenny fakes a hand on him. He's going to take it for himself. Short game, maybe two or three yards. And if you've seen it, there's, it's always been shotgun for Northern Highlands. Uh, they must like the shotgun, or is it, if it's like Brian, you said before, the pressure is scaring them, and they just want to move back and, to, and want to avoid sacks. It'll be second and seven for the Highlanders, as that was a gain of three on the quarterback keeper by Kevin Kenny. Three wide receiver, excuse me, three wide receivers in for the Highlanders. And a flag is thrown right next to the wide receiver at the top of the screen. That's Dave Lohman. Maybe he fidgeted or maybe the linesman saw somebody on the line fidget. And it is full star. We'll have to wait for the number. Again, penalties are, are stalking up. I mean, uh, just piling up for those Highlands. And their penalty yardage right now is about maybe, if I could guess, around like 50 or 60 yards, which is not going to help you in the long run if you want to come back. The call was actually a legal procedure, not a full start. I was a little mixed up since the official referee gesture is the same for a legal procedure and full start. Either way, that'll set the Highlanders back. It's now second and 12 from their own 20. Kenny hands it off to Ross Nash, who breaks open into the secondary. Nice open a, field. A productive run there by Zach Ross Nash as he gains back most of the lost yardage. And it's going to be third and short. Nice open field tackle there by Matt DeBlock. He stepped up. And the up. safety, Matt DeBlock, 
how to make that tackle. A little trouble with our audio as Dan went in front of Brian, but don't worry, folks. It happens. It's local television. It's just a little miscommunication. I'm having difficulty hearing Brian. It's just the electricity in the stadium is just <laughs> pretty loud for this season opener. Three wide receivers for the Highlanders. Kenny throwing down the left field. Justin Horhan's got his eyesight on it. And somebody came down with it. And it looks like Horhan's got the ball. Wayne Hills is pointing in that direction. And they do, in fact, have the ball. Interception by Justin Horhan, his first interception of the season. And the Wayne Hills Patriots will take over. I mean, if we could get a replay up, you could just, if you compare this play to a Wayne Hills Mike Quinn throw, first of all, the throw was bad. It wasn't a spiral at all. Mike has great placement. And the second thing is the receivers. I mean, their receivers didn't step up and try to cut in front of Justin Horhan on that interception. And that's the difference between a catch and an interception. You know what? A great athleticism by Justin Horan, showing us that he has the ups to maybe jump over someone as he had as he reached up for that interception. On the 44. First and 10 from their own 44. Dowling the tailback. James D. Delectus in front of him. And we're going to have a stoppage of play. Maybe a timeout. I think it's a referee timeout. Yeah, I was going to agree with you, Brian. I think it appeared the official made a signal that he was stopping time. Not really sure what for. Now, now what do you starting time? Now, what do you guys think Wayne Hills has to do after coming back with, I think, two unsuccessful drives or three? What do you think they have to do to score? I mean, I think they just need to change up their playbook. That was one of my keys, as you see right here. They're passing a nice play action. I mean, it just goes back to basics. A drop pass right there by Dita Lectus. They're trying to change it up. Normally, like I said many times before, Dita Lectus blocks, but now they're trying to change it up. They gave him a pass, and it obviously just couldn't complete it there. And like what, you, like just like you said, Brian, back to basics. This is multiple, multiple drop passes. The fullback again, Brian Dickman dropping a pass. I mean, they just got to work on their hands and come back because these plays can be the touchdown plays or the big plays that may totally change the game. It'll be second and ten for the Patriots. I formation behind Quinn. The handoff is a Dowling who breaks open into the secondary, and he's taken down from behind at the Highlanders 47 yard line. Good run by Dowling, he gains the first down and extra yards. And it looks like something is wrong with Dowling's hands as he, after every play, keeps shaking. Maybe it's just wet, or maybe he, hit, he hits the other player, because he's not wearing gloves unlike other players. Two wide receivers, I formation behind Quinn. Quinn just back to pass, three-step drop, complete, incomplete, intended for Justin Horahan. I don't know really what's going on with the Patriots. I mean, the, Mike Quinn just had two perfect passes, and they were just dropped by Horahan, which is really unexpected, and Dietelectis, which is kind of expected considering he's a fullback. And this is just the kind of stuff that makes Olsen mad. Not only this, but the penalties, but stuff like this just just makes him, makes him mad. And this just means footage, footage, and longer practices for the Patriots. Handoff is Dowling as he's tackled down for a short game of maybe two or three. And Senior safety Mike Malone makes the tackle. And it looked like uh, there was some miscommunication as Fonte was saying to, I believe, Salerno, like, like what what happened on that play? You know, as the offensive line just broke down on that play again, and they just need to step it up, make some big holes like they did in the first half. Third and eight for the Patriots as play action. Quinn's going to keep it for himself. Turns the left corner. He's got room to run. He's taken out at about the. They're going to actually mark him out at the 28-yard line. He obviously stepped out of bounds prior to where he finished. Great and job. And enough for a first down, so. Great job there by Mike Quinn, knowing where the first down marker was and where he had to go to get that first down. That's just, you get that by experience, but obviously it's instinct for him considering it's his first debut. 
And I believe Quinn became a, a, a lot more confident after the 23-6 to lead because if you saw, I believe, in the second quarter, Quinn had an open field and ran straight out of bounds. But now he's going for the extra yards and trying to get his team in the field in a touchdown position. Quick pass across Justin Horahan. Good block by Brian Ogden as Horahan is able to turn the corner and take him down just shy of the first down marker. And that, that screen is Wayne Hill's caliber... Uh, play. I mean, that's just a play that they always run, and that gives them great yards. So it's second and one. It was a pickup of nine yards, not quite enough for the first down. And we're going to have a timeout called by the Highlanders of Northern Highlands with four minutes and six seconds to go in the third quarter. The Wayne Hills Patriots lead... The Northern Highlands Highlanders, 23-6. to six. Guys, surprisingly in the first quarter, I mean, you had so many touchdowns scored. Now it's we're well into the second half. There's four minutes in the third quarter, and there's still no points scored in the second half. What are your thoughts on that? All I have to say is that I think Wayne Hills is just, just um, showing that they can keep possession of the game. But other than that, they have their offense has flowed well except for the fourth and 10 going forward, and then the one time, the fourth and three, when you had a clear, easy field goal for Tim Divers, who has proven himself to be a great kicker. And I don't know, Wayne Hills has to just look at the end of this game and see where they could have gained the points and where they lost the points. Yeah, I'd really like to see, you know, there's, as you mentioned, Sean, there were two opportunities where it would have seemed like the, the obvious choice, the conservative choice would have been to bring Tim Divers in and, you know, I'm really curious to see him kick field goals. You know, he, obviously he kicked a, a ton of more PATs and field goals. You don't see as many field goals in high school football. But, you know, I'd really like to see the leg he has on the field goals, which, unfortunately, we have two chances to see it, but the Patriots elected not to do that. As it again, it'll be second and one with just over four minutes to go in the third quarter. Two wide receivers. The hand is to Dowling, who breaks to the left, cuts back, and tackled down the... 13-yard line, he has enough for the first down. And now the Patriots are into the red zone. And what I see from when, when you see Dowling run is tunnel vision, where all he sees is the field ahead of him and knows when to cut back into the lanes and juke away from uh, receivers, I mean uh, defenders. It'll be a first down for the Patriots. I'm looking for a play-action pass right here into the end zone. Slap reverse, slap reverse. And the ball's handed off to Brian Ogden on the reverse, and he's taken down at about the three-yard line. We'll see if that's enough for the first down. That was a great job by Mike Quinn right there to fake the run up the middle with the fullback or the running back, and then you see the end around come with Brian Ogden, who obviously can take a hit and give a hit. And he almost got into the end zone. And what I was thinking, I saw the play action. I was like, yes, I'm finally right on one of my calls. <laughs> and then they go and trick me with that wide receiver reverse. On that play, we saw number 11, Max De Carvalho, a junior. I think that was, at least it's the first play I noticed that he was in. He's a tall wide receiver listed at six foot three. He's actually he's a new transfer. Quinn under center, hands it off to Dowling. Oh, who's tackled down for a loss and maybe the six yard line. They're gonna spot him, yeah, at the six. That's a loss. And Dowling looked to like trip, be tripped up on the play as his head was facing down the whole time. I don't think he had any, uh, any you know, acceleration coming out of the pocket. On third and four right now, I think it's time for the play action pass. I don't wanna jinx myself like Sean did and they come with an end around. Right now, I think it's pretty standard that they're going to go with possibly an out route to Ogden or Horhan in the end zone. So it'll be third and four for the Patriots with just under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Eye formation behind Quinn. Quick pass to Horhan to the left. And Justin's taken out of bounds at the three-yard line. Now we'll get to see the goal line of the offense and the defense and see who's dominant. And we're going to have an official timeout as it appears that a Northern Highlands player is injured down by the sideline. Now it's fourth and four. 
after multiple unsuccessful fourth down conversions, what do you think Wayne Hills is going to do? Do you think they're going to go for it, or do you think they're going to kick the smart field goal to put them up in points and maybe go up 20 points, which will give them a huge lead going into what is maybe the fourth quarter? Based on what's happened in the previous plays, I think that they're going for it, fourth and four. Even if they turn over, it's not a big deal. They turn over, what's the worst that happens? They get a safety in their case. So it's Definitely. really not that big of a risk. I think right now it's time for some curl routes. Those are pretty effective as you elude the defender. I don't know. We'll see what happens. On the previous two fourth down attempts, I thought that I would have preferred to see a field goal. But actually, in this situation, with four yards to go, I actually I like I like the call I like the idea of going for it on fourth down because you know if you if you don't convert then you have the Highlanders who have to trek 96 yards down the field for a score that's a that's a lot that's a, that's a long drive it's gonna be tough for them to maintain possession for that long also if you do capitalize and score the touchdown you can really slam the door in the face of the Highlanders and there's a good chance with two and a half minutes to go in the, the third quarter they might not come back from that kind of lead deficit rather. And it looks, well, after the player gets put onto the sidelines, I think they are going to kick it. I think, I believe Tim Divers is in. Oh, never mind. Quinn no, is Quinn's going to, yeah. yeah, he's going to get the play. So what do you think the, what do you think the play is going to be, Brian? A curl, a play action? We've I been wrong before. I know. Well, I'm sure I'm wrong, but I, if I was Olsen, right now I'd be calling a, call, a curl. I would say play action and have Dowling, I mean, uh, Quinn run it in. But they're in jumbo set. The hand is to Dowling, and he's stuffed. He does not get into the end zone. So it will be a turnover on Downs. And the Northern Highlands Highlanders, well, they got a lot of grasp. Well, rather, field turf in their way to score a touchdown. I think right now, it's on defense, rather, it's very critical that you have your safety play back. Due to the fact you have everybody rushing to the quarterback trying to get a safety. If th he throws off a little dump pass, he's going to have a lot of yards to run. You need somebody to come up, get in his face, and make the tackle. Because there's been numerous plays where they're on the two-yard line and they break a tackle, run for 90 yards, and score a touchdown. And definitely, Brian, as the Wayne Hills plays in a 4-4 where there's four linebackers and four defensive linemen, and when you, when you press up like that, you need the other three second people in the secondary to play up and now the chain gang comes out to see if it's a first down and it is not a first down as the ball will be turned over on downs Northern Highlands will take over possession looks like just just by a hair they missed it and Northern Highlands is going ecstatic as they get the ball back and get their chance to come back and maybe cut the lead down there is a comeback. I think now would be the time for them to use it. <laughs> and you know, Sean, you mentioned the Northern Highlands fans and bench and coaches being ecstatic, and you know, justifiably so. I I have to say, you know, if if the score is to remain at twenty three to six and it ends like this, you know, although the Northern although Northern Highlands will have lost. That's really a win for them in a way. They get their hardest opponent out of the way the first week, and they play pretty well against them. Kenny hands off to Ross Nash, who's hit hard just beyond the line of scrimmage by number 45 captain linebacker Ryan Derno. First big hit of the game by him. With the way the defensive line has been playing, I see no reason to run it up the middle. They've been getting stuffed the entire game. That's just risking a safety. You should be passing right now. Especially, they've been playing shotgun all game. I don't think on that play they were in shotgun formation. Now is the time to be doing that. And right now I'm just flabbergasted that they run another halfback draw in shotgun. Consistently, it does not work, but yet they go back to it. Kenny in the gun. Four wide receivers. Hands off to Ross Nash, who again, not much room to run. Hills, the Wayne Hills Patriots calling for a safety. Let's see. They're not going to get a safety as forward progress was stopped before the runner was pushed into the end zone. It's going to be third and long for the Highlanders. And I don't know, right now, I, I say the coaches are just not playing, to, uh, playing their players to a potential. I mean, they can use their players to do, throw deep bombs and just use their athleticism, but right now they are just not doing it with these halfback draws. Three wide receivers in for the Highlanders. Kenny with a man to his left.
Drops back to pass, throws quickly to the left. And that ball is not intercepted, not caught either. Ball stayed in the air for a while, jumbling around, but in the end, nobody was able to get their hands on it as it's incomplete. And it's now going to be fourth and 11 for the Highlanders. Tough punt here as their punter is going to not have a, as much room as he normally would behind the snap. And not the luckiest play for Wayne Hills as before when Justin Horahan got that tip pass. This time, none of the players were at the right place at the right time, but still great play by the defense. Obviously, this punt will set up the Patriots with excellent field position. Let's see if it's a block in the punt, maybe, with a smaller field. The punt does get off, and Justin Horahan picks it up at the 41-yard line, running towards the left side of the field, and he's taken down from behind at about the 31-yard line. But again, Patriots with excellent field position as we close in on a minute left remaining in the third quarter. And this quarter, to me, went fast because Wayne Hills had the ball maybe 95% of the time as when Northern Highlands got the ball, it was in horrible field position. It definitely seemed like this quarter Wayne Hills controlled the clock. They controlled the pace of the game and what was going to happen. I mean, this quarter was all Wayne Hills, as was the whole game. <laughs> Quinn play action, rolls to his right, looking for a man downfield, and the pass is complete to Brian Ogden. It's a gain of about nine, and it'll be second and two or second and one for the Patriots. And finally, they run the play action, finally. I think that what you saw right there and what we see on past plays, Quinn is growing a little tired from scrambling all the time, tucking the ball. That's why in these previous out routes to Ogden, I think there was one before, he's throwing them a little short, which Ogden is adapting to, as you saw in the last play. High formation behind Quinn. The hand is to Dowling, who's taken down at about the 21-yard line. That should be enough for the first down. And on that play, Dowling was just crumpled by the Northern Highlands defensive line as he stood up from the first from the first tackle, but just stayed strong. And I, I just before the quarter ends, I just like to give a shout out to the Wayne Hills TV Club that are downstairs working the game, working the production, the audio, the switcher, the graphics, and just doing a great job to bring you this game. Two seconds remaining in the quarter. Encroachment. And with one second remaining in the quarter, in the quarter there's a flag thrown. Flag prior to the snap. We'll see what the call is, and if it was indeed before the quarter expired. The head official's calling the Patriots back to the line. And it is offsides on the defense. That's just a careless play. I mean, the end of the quarter is taken down. I don't see why you have to jump. They're obviously not going to hike the play. I don't see the reasoning behind that. Yeah, these are the penalties that give you the long practices, give you the long lectures, and I don't think any of the Highlanders players would like that. Especially after this slaughter. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be first and ten for the Patriots. As the ball is handed off to Tom DiBianco, who breaks a tackle, going forward still, and he's taken down at the four-yard line. A strong run by Tom DiBianco. And finally, Tom gets into the game. Tom, a good friend of mine. Big Bengals fan, but Bengals did, didn't do as well. But Tom coming in, showing that he can run and showing that he, can, he has the moves to play for Wayne Hills. Those are the kind of things that are going to hurt the Highlanders, considering they just gave up 15 unanswered yards. They had the penalty, then they have this large run by Tom, and now that that will end the third quarter, whereas before the Patriots had no gain, they just gained 15 yards unanswered. Great run by Tom DiBianca. He showed an extra gear there as once he broke past the line, broke into the secondary, really turned it on, and I actually thought he was going to run for the, uh, run for the touchdown. It looks like he, he cut it back, and then he uh, unfortunately fell on a tackle or ahead of him. So at the end of the third quarter, the score is 23-6 to in favor of the Wayne Hills Patriots. And Dan, I'd just like to point out that Wayne Hills, I, I don't know if they have this game won, but what do you think they have to do now, knowing that it's the fourth quarter, knowing that they have this big of a lead, what do you think they have to do for their offense and how they have to run their offense? You know, I think they got to stick with the running game. As long as the ball, as long as the ball is in a running back's hand or someone who's running, 
that play, that the, the clock is still going to move. If you if you if you take the risk of throwing the ball, you run the risk of an interception or an incomplete pass. Incomplete pass that stops the clock. Interceptions, obviously, worst case scenario because you no longer have the ball. So if I were the Patriots, I would keep the running game going with Tom DeBianca and Brian Dowling. So here we are, first and four for the Patriots, as this ball is handed off to Dowling, who's back in the game. A game about two or three. That was Ogden on the run. Was it? You're yes. right. It was Brian Ogden on the run. Fives and the nines confuse everyone. And, that, and that's something we've seen um, earlier in this game. We noticed that it appeared that Brian Ogden was carrying the duties of the, the short red zone running um, in the first quarter. He had some reps as um, he scored a rushing touchdown from inside the five-yard line. So maybe that's something we're going to see a lot in the future. Brian Ogden taking the runs from taking runs from short distances. Except for now, the it jumbo to set. Dibianca is the last man in. The toss is Dibianca, who's tapped with the one-yard line flag thrown. It's on the Patriots. I think now with this flag. Well, and see what the call is. So we'll see what the penalty is. And it is Older. holding on the offense, so that's a tough penalty. Ten yarder. This one's gonna put the Patriots in an uncomfortable field position. As I was saying before, like Dan said, they're in an uncomfortable field position right now. That extra ten yards, obviously, right now you're going with a pass, going for the end zone. I think. But other than that, I, I feel I feel this penalty gives them a little bit more room to work things out. I mean, when you're in the goal line, basically all you can do is jumbo sets or maybe play actions. But now they're in a five receiver set and give them more opportunities to score. Five wide receivers for the Patriots. It's a quick pass to Brian Ogden, who breaks one tackle, running straight, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. Touchdown, Brian Ogden, his third touchdown of the game as the Wayne Hills Patriots take a 29-6 lead. What an amazing play by Brian Ogden. Mike Quinn under pressure. Oh, and there's a flag on the play. We'll see what this call is. Excessive celebration, yeah, maybe. They don't like in sportsman like conduct on the offense. You know what? I, I still think that just like the, the Washington-BYU game, this, this touchdown and this, uh, this celebration wasn't as... You know, you know, intense as maybe you see Chad Johnson or T.O. doing active things. This is more natural, and I don't know. They should just work on what they think the penalty should be and what the right, the right excessive celebration call should be. I didn't see the play, but you know, I know it's from last year in high school football. You um, when you score a touchdown, you really you have to give the ball right to the official. You can't spike it. You really can't even just drop it. There's no celebrations. You don't see any Chad Ochocinco taking out props, Steve Smith taking out props as obviously no props, and there's really no celebration whatsoever. So the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff, not the PAT. Tim Divers on for the extra point attempt, and another flag is I think is that's going to be a delay of game. And it's an illegal substitution on Northern Highlands. I mean, before the call, we'll get back to the call on the excessive celebration on Sportsmanlike Conduct. I think at this point, that was just unnecessary. He wasn't dancing in the end zone or anything like that. He was just running with the ball. It's nothing major. I think at this point, it's a sympathy call, honestly. But I mean, that was a great play by Brian Ogden. Let's not forget about that. He made a nice catch off the screen. Mike didn't really have his feet set to deliver a nice pass. And he ran through the defense into the touchdown. And I agree with you. I'm not a real, I'm not a huge fan of that 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 rule in the playbook. I remember last year there was an instance where Mike G. Pop, the quarterback, ran a touchdown in for himself, and he didn't spike it. He just he just dropped the ball. He didn't give it to, he didn't give it right to the official. He just dropped it. And you know they called the excessive celebration penalty, and that that tacks on a lot of yardage on the kickoff. And you know I'm not a, I agree. I I think that if there is an excessive celebration, I think that if a wide receiver all of a sudden you know brings a pony in to the end zone and starts That's riding it, you know, then we have an issue. But, you know, just dropping the ball instead of giving it to the official, I, I just, I don't understand that. You but know, as you can see, there's this giant, like, fog smoke coming in. It is not the mist, don't be worried. It is the cannon. The cannon has excessive smoke and is, like, fogging up the entire field, but not affecting Wayne Hills. The legendary cannon. 
It's not big, but it sure makes a loud boom. If the smoke was blocking your screen, the PAT was converted as the Patriots take a 30 to six lead. And with just about 10.56 left in the final quarter, the Highland, Highlanders will look to try to convert on a pretty weak offensive show tonight. However, again, still, they have, they have put points on the board, which is much better than what they did last year when they didn't put any points on the board. So again, yeah, even when they go home, it's still, it's really, I think it's still a win in their minds almost. Yeah, definitely. I think they come back knowing that they did not lose 63 to nothing in this game, that they came and put on a good first quarter and even though they made a couple bad mistakes, they just played an all-around decent game. And you know what? That the, the 63 and nothing that brings up something interesting. You know, this is really a new look kind of Northern Highlands team. Uh, Coach Lacerdo last year in his first year, it was really baptism by fire. He had an awful season, 0 and 10, pretty much as bad as he gets. He had to suspend seven players in the beginning of the season. He loses his first game as a coach, 63 to zero. But this year, they're playing much better. They have players back. They have their punter back, who we've seen can do a great job. Punt uh, kickoff receiver to the 25 yard line and a good return there as the return gets to about the 47. And finally, Northern Highlands gets some good field position because the past, I believe, three, two or three drives, they were inside their own zone. They were, they were getting pressured consistently and they just haven't been able to work their offense like they normally do. So it'll be first and 10 for the Northern Highlands Highlanders working from their own 46 yard line. Tremendous field position for them in comparison to the field previous field positions the, the rest of the game. Kenny under center, two wide receivers set, sends one in motion. The toss is to number six, Karan. Flag thrown, I think that's an illegal motion. It appeared that the wide receiver set in motion turned upfield prior to the snap, and yeah, it is an illegal motion. That was number 32, Derek Bach, a senior, 5'11", 185. A lot, of, a lot of times the kids running in motion thinks that the play revolves around them, that the quarterback will wait for them. When in reality, they gotta wait for the snap. They have to wait for the quarterback to call the hike, which obviously there, there must have been some confusion with the wide receiver. Now again, Northern Highlands getting pushed back, now first and 15, and they just need to play smart and shorten on the penalties. Three wide receivers in for the Patriots. Play action as Kenny rolls to his left, throws into completed to number 35 as he's taken down at the Wayne Hills 46 yard line. That's Zachary Riker, a junior fullback slash linebacker. That's a, that's a productive gain for them. And as you saw on the plate, almost got tipped by, I believe, number three, James Hogan. And if they tipped that, that would have been a big play for Wayne Hills. So now it'll be second and five for the Highlanders. Four wide receivers in. And the ball's handed off to Zach Ross Nash as he picks up most of the remaining yards needed for the first down. It's gonna be third and short for the Highlanders. At this point, I really think Northern Highlands has two plays to get to it. At this point, you're down so much, you're obviously gonna go for it on fourth down, or at least I would. Mike Carbonelli checks into the game as a defensive tackle for the Patriots. Three wide receivers for the Highlanders. Kenny in the gun. Drops back to Pest. Here comes the pressure, running to his right, looking downfield, throwing deep into the corner, and throws that ball away. The closest wide receiver was number three, Dave Lohman, but there was no way that he was gonna catch up to that. Now the cube quarterback was very mobile on that play, getting out to the side, but just having a bad throw, throwing it to the, throwing out of bounds to no receiver, but great movement by him. I don't really understand that play personally. He took so much time to deliver the ball, he pointed to a receiver and then he threw it out of bounds. The ball was closer to a Wayne Hills defender than it was to his receiver. Fourth and two for the Highlanders. 
as they're going to attempt to convert on fourth down and maintain the ball on offense. Big play for them. That's a, yeah, this is a huge play for them. This is probably, in, in reality, a make or break play for them. Four wide receivers for Kenny. Drops back to pass. Rolling to his right. Throws in complete down the sideline. And that's enough for the first down. That was complete to number three, Dave Lohman. I mean, with that rollback, he got a lot of pressure from the D-line, but he dropped back. With that drop back, that was really a 10-yard pass on a fourth and two play. What's great athleticism from the quarterback stepping up when it really mattered. Yeah, definitely great play. Big momentum shift. Wayne Hill's defense must be just tired thinking that, you know what, I can go to the bench, get a sip of water, and get ready for offense. But now you have to go back and play another first and first down. The handoff is to Ross Nash as he gains about four yards up to middle, up the middle, excuse me. Ross Nash again on McCarry. So it'll be probably about second and six, second and seven, depending on where the spot is. Now, what do you what do you guys think? Do you think Wayne Hills is loosening up on their defense or playing harder to stop them from scoring? I mean, at this point, I think that you always play hard, no matter how much time is left in the in the game. I mean, I really don't know what they're gonna do. I think they're gonna go full force. They never let up. Definitely. There's no mercy in this game. The fake handoff is to Ross Nash as Kenny keeps it for himself and runs up the middle for a couple of yards. And again, either they go to the halfback draw or the QB run or just a small play, action play. But these, their playbook is very simple right now. They, they should, I expect a big pass to surprise the Wayne's defense and do something that just might catch them off guard and might get them for a big game like they did in the first touchdown where the receiver didn't expect a long pass and got broke by the receiver. Four wide receivers again for the Highlanders. It seems that that is the set they're using on this offensive drive. Kenny back to pass, and he just throws that ball away Potential as the grounded. pressure came. Maybe. No flag down right now for intentional grounding. I didn't see a receiver in the vicinity, and it did appear he was between the tackles, but no flag. As you see on that play, Wayne Hill showed the blitz and got the pressure on the quarterback to make a successful play, made him throw it away. Yeah, one of my keys was pressure, and this defense today has really shown their pressure, and which caused Wayne Hills to get a lot of penalty. I mean, uh, Northern Highlands to get some penalties and some bad throws and some rush throws. Again, the Highlanders looking at a fourth down conversion. It's fourth and five from the Patriots' 38-yard line. Four wide receivers for Kenny. Kenny drops back to pass, throwing deep into the corner of the left field. And that ball is dropped by Dave Lohman. Dave Lohman had that one, probably should have caught it, and he dropped it. I mean, that is just, you got to feel awful as a receiver knowing that it's fourth and five. They trust you with a deep ball, and it's in your hands, and you drop it. I mean, that is just a crucial play in this game. And if they got that play, I mean, if, they, if he caught the ball, that will be a total momentum shift. And... Just the defense would be tired, you know, playing this much might uh, lose your stamina, playing four downs each play. And if they got that play, I don't know, touchdown, and then maybe the next play, play good on defense, get another touchdown. But now Wayne Hills is on offense and just playing great right now. As the ball is turned over on downs, first play for the Patriots was a quick pass to the left for to Justin Horahan, complete for about five, six yards. That will leave a... Second and three left for the Patriots. Now with about six minutes left, six minutes remaining, do you think Wayne Hills is going to go for another score or try to run down the clock? What do you guys think? I mean, considering they have a 24-point deficit, I think they're always hungry for more as Mike Quinn completes the pass to number two, Nick Massey. He's a sophomore. But as I was saying, I mean, they have a 24 deficit right now. That's a four-possession game. If they get another touchdown, that makes it a five-possession game. I mean, they're always hungry for more. They're not going to let up. They're going to go for the touchdown. Maybe after that, they'll try to run the clock down. But for now, I think they're going for the points. 
And as you saw in that play, Nick Massey getting the catch. I've heard big things about him. I heard he is a big work workhorse, and uh, I heard he runs runs with the uh, you know just no fear and just going as hard as he can every play. The handoff is to Tom DeBianco, who shakes a tackle right to his left. It breaks another tackle before he's taken down for about a three-yard gain. And you guys mentioned the fullback, Nick Massey. Congratulations to him as he makes his first varsity reception. It was a pretty good one. Esposito and Bach on the tackle. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think Olsen should put in his younger players, let them see some playing time, or keep in the starters to make sure that they don't lose the game. I think at limits he could put in some substitutions. He can't be putting in his completely second string. I mean, he, right now his varsity is all, is very new. He's got to get them comfortable before he even thinks about putting in the second string. Second and eight for the Patriots. I formation behind Quinn. Play action, quick throw to the right, intended for Justin Horian, complete. Justin Horian breaks a tackle, still on his feet, taken down to the 21 yard line. Great job by Justin Horian to produce some yards after the catch, those, those ever so important rack yards. And that's something you see in the NFL, you know, they trust the receivers to make the big plays, like say like a Steve Smith who uses his speed. And right there, Justin, Justin Horian using his agility to break a couple tackles and get them a big game. First down for the Patriots, first and 10. Two wide receivers in, including Max De Carvalho. The handoff is a Tom DeBianca, who gains about six yards before tackled. This is just optimal right now for the Patriots. They're ramming the ball down Northern Island's throats. So they're staying in bounds. They're still gaining yards, still gaining first downs. And pretty soon they'll be in the end zone. It'll be a five possession game and it's basically at this point it's out of reach but then it's just really out of reach I mean right now you want to keep it on the ground or you can keep passing it just stay in bounds that's the most crucial part and I like to point out this is definitely a new Wayne Hills team because they don't put up the huge amount of points in quick time you know they they like to play more of an offense you know work their offense and take their time with the play, run some great plays, and just wear down the defense, which I think is a new look for the Wayne Hills Patriots. DeBianca on that play, short game before he was stuffed just to the line of scrimmage. And on that play, I know yeah, we noticed um, the Patriots had their number three and number four receivers in, in Mark Romeo and Max De Carvalho, and did Brian Ogden has just checked back in. And you always want to put in the other players from time to time. You don't want your starting players going home dead beat, dead tired, and not ready for the next game. And the handoff goes again to Brian Ogden. We've seen him do that throughout the game. And he broke a tackle. He actually, first initial contact was in the backfield, and he managed to break away from that tackle and get back to around the line of scrimmage. Productive run by Brian Ogden. It's, it's going to be third and short for the Patriots. It's another injury on the field for Northern Islands. Actually, they're moving the chains, so that was a first down. Not quite in goal to go range, goal to go range for the Patriots. They can get one more first down at about the two yard line as Max De Carvalho checks out and Justin Horahan checks back in. Here comes Wayne Hills coming up to the line. Good run by Brian Ogden. And Brian Ogden takes the run there, short run. It's going to be second and about seven or six. And Guys, at this point, do you think that Northern Silent should even bother using up their timeouts to stop the clock? Or do you think they should just be graceful and go down easy? Uh, I don't know. That's a tough decision. I, I mean, you want they want to go down with the fight, you know. But at this point, the game is just done. I mean, I, if I was Northern Highlands, I would put in my backups so that I would uh, keep the risk down for injury. Keep keep the risk for injuries down. 
play action, tenant for Brian Dowling. Quinn rolling to his left, and it's complete to James D. to like this, the three flag. yard line. Penalty flag down in the vicinity of offensive holding. This one's probably gonna come back. And let's take a moment to look at the upcoming schedule for the, for the Wayne Hills Patriots. Next week, the Patriots go to Bergenfield to play the Bergenfield Bears. Not a strong team, but again, you can't be too cocky going in. Week three is a huge matchup, probably the biggest test of the year against the Green Raiders of Rampo. A huge rivalry. Rampo has failed off a little bit in the past few years, but this year they're expected to be a really strong team. And actually, although it's on the road, we will be there to cover the game for you. So don't worry, you're not going to miss your Wayne Hills Patriots football action. Wayne Hills Patriots at the Green Raiders of Rampo. We will have that game covered for you. And in the future also, stay, tu stay tuned to Channel 77 because... We just work constantly. We got soccer. We got boy soccer, girl soccer, field hockey. It's just a lot of fun in the fall for Wayne Hills TV. And and a big a big game I want want to talk about is Northern. I mean Northern Valley or Ultapan. You know, they put up a good game, and it's another big rivalry other than Ramapo. As this pass is complete to James Delectus, who breaks one tackle before he's taken down at about the 15 yard line. Great job by James D. to like this there. He knew that although it was a screen, I'm not sure if that was a planned screen, he was just open, Mike was feeling the pressure. But he stayed in bounds. That was the most crucial part of the play. I mean, it's not the most productive, but the clock's going to tick down eventually. It's going down to about 1.30 now, and I think that the Highlanders are just going to go down without a fight. And one thing i like to point out, if you want to know where those amazing graphics came up on the screen, one person I like to tell you about, Michael Bowenick, using the wonderful program Final Cut Pro. And if you have any questions, ask Mike about it. And and Jordan Kessel on audio. Here's Quinn Jukin to a throw and a miss. And we have Kyle Katin on camera, Connor Peckham on camera, Sean De Perry on technical director. If you don't know what technical director is, it's when if it's how you see the camera switching, even though we have one camera today. And and special thanks to to the Paletio brothers who came and showed their support. And it could not have all been done. And to Mr. Berkowitz. Yes, to Mr. Berkowitz and Mr. Hookstraight, the two leaders of, of Wayno's TV. And we'd like to just give a shout out to Andrew Gallo, David Sunta, Brian Rossman, the former the Duenos TV Hall of Fame. As Tim, Tim Divers will Divers take his first, field, his goal first field goal attempt of the game. This one's up. Will it have enough juice? Shanked. No, actually, it looked like it might have had enough distance, but it was left. So the, kick, the field goal is not converted. Tim Divers attempted field goal is wide left. So with one minute and 15 seconds remaining in the first game of the 2008-2009 Wayne Hills Patriots football season, the Wayne Hills Patriots lead the Northern Highlands Highlanders 30 to six. Now guys, do you think this is a win Wayne Hills would like to come out and see? You know, maybe they were looking for the blowout or looking for something that shows how strong their offense really is. Do you think the coaches and the players are happy about this win? I mean, you're always happy about a win regardless. I think Highlands would be a little bit more appreciative of this win. But, I mean, Hills, you with Hills, you expect a blowout. Let's face it, in the past seasons, they've been spoiled with players and talent. And I think this year's no different. They're definitely spoiled with talent. But this isn't as big a blowout as one would like a 63 nothing last year. But, again, those were seniors returning at, from starting juniors. Maybe next year when Northern Highlands returns, if the schedule is still intact, We'll see if Mike Quinn can step up and it'll be a 63 nothing blowout. Who knows? Yeah, I'll tell you what. For the Patriots, although a win's a win. There's no doubt about that. It's going to show up on your record as 1-0. But you know what? I think, I have to say, I think it was a sloppy game. It was the first game of the season. A lot of new players playing with other players that they haven't played with on varsity. I think from that sense, they played well. But again, the, the two lost fumbles, I think they got to have a lot of room for improvement. So with one minute and 15 seconds remaining, the Highlanders will take over at their own 20. Kenny under center, hands off to Ross Nash, who breaks into the linebacker core and is taken down for about a gain of four or five. And you guys mentioned, you may mention of last year's game, the 63-0 game, and uh, what's interesting about that game, just looking at the score summary, 
I can see that the touchdowns were scored by DeSico, Marson, Ogden, DeSico, Marson, Ogden. So those in, are all addition, returning players. The third quarter touchdowns were scored by Dan DeSico, John Griglack, and Joe Volpe. So only Brian Ogden and John Griglack are still on this team from the people who scored touchdowns. But the majority of the scoring, obviously, by players who graduated. So there's going to be a lot of room for improvement this year for the Patriots. They're going to need to find scoring that they lost. And I think they're probably going to have that scoring in Ogden and Dries and DeBianca and Justin Horahan and Brian Dowling. And hopefully we can see some production from the tight ends like Brian Dickman, Joe Russo. As the handoff is up to Zach Ross Nash, a gain of a short game about two or three. And definitely, like you said, Dan, if you look at the score, if you see the, if you just listen to the scores, it's been Dan DeSico called the Mars and Brian Ogden, and it goes on again in the pattern. And I think that's what Wayne Hills is trying to do, have a pattern. You have uh, Quinn, Ogden, and as the game comes to an end, as Wayne Hills wins 30 to 6, makes it 41 in a row, and I. Great win for Wayne Hills, right then? Yeah, that's a that's a phenomenal, phenomenal win for the Patriots. As they win 30 to 6. That's the final score here from Patriot Stadium. So guys, let me ask you, what are your thoughts on today's game? I mean, today it was a season opener, it was a test of a lot of the players' abilities, a lot of new positions. I think it was really a tester on everything that happened. Mike was in his new position. I think everything happens for a reason. I think with games, just experience is going to happen. I think Quinn's just going to step up, and all the new players, Dowling, all of them really stepped up tonight, and they're going to do marvelous. And definitely, like you said, Brian, this, it's, it is the first game, and they, they just came out and showed that they can win games like the teams before. They can score great offensive touchdowns like the games before. And Wayne Hills just has to come into this knowing that they, you know, that they are here to here to play and here to maybe get that 52 straight in a row and maybe get that state championship. And this is a great win for Wayne Hills, and let's see if they can continue this streak. Well, next week, as we mentioned earlier, the Patriots will take on the Bears of Bergenfield away on the road. Uh, the Bergenfield Bears have not been a strong team in the past. They're not projected to be a strong team again this year. What do you think the Patriots have to do in this next week to prepare for that game, even though you know they're expected to win, but you really, you know, there's parity in sports. You never know if you're going to win. What do the Patriots need to do on th this week to prepare for that game? I think that they need to establish an offensive line. I've repeated it m numerous times tonight. I mean, the Mike Quinn, he's obviously not going to get off. I don't think they're going to have to as slow of a start last time as they did this time, and I think that they're going to have a good start next week. I think the offensive line will stay stick up, and I think they're overall they'll have a fine game. And like you said, you know, all they have to work on is penalties and just careless mistakes. They have to keep their heads in the game and know that they can win the game, and that with these penalties, that they won't it won't slow them down for their offensive and defensive possessions. Well, again, your final score, 30 to six, a good start for the seat for the season the season opener. They have a Right outlook for the rest of the season. The 41st win in a row, and now the attempt to go for five state championships in a row, still looking pretty good. Well, that's that's going to wrap it up from here at Patriot Stadium. Again, your final score: Wayne Hills Patriots 30, the visiting Northern Highlands Highlanders six. From all of us here at Wayne Hills TV, Brian Debo, Sean Yu, myself, Dan Cohen, down with the crew. We have uh, Sean DePerry, the Palacio brothers, Mike Bowenick, Jordan Kessel. Our cameraman, Connor Peckham, Kyle Katine, and of course, what will we do with our producers, Mr. Berkowitz and Mr. Hookstraight? From all of us, we say, have a good night, and we'll see you in two weeks as the Wayne Hills Patriots go on the road to play the Green Raiders of Ramapo.